What's up, you guys? My name is Blake. What's up, you guys? My name is People. What is good, my people? What's up, you people? My Ethan's. What's up, guys? My name's Ethan Garland, and this is my episode of People with a Passion. You know, cut it. We're good. That'll work. Every day we are bombarded with choice what to wear, what to watch, what to write, what to create. The infinite consumption of the modern day pulls us out of the present. Excess stimulus fogs our vision and leaves us indecisive and frozen. We have lift off. That's why we have to simplify the little things. So that we can move forward with confidence. So that we can be decisive. So that we can chase our dreams. People with a passion. A podcast for the dream chasers. The people who strive for the top. The ones who don't stop at anything to achieve their goals. The people with a passion. Let's get it. They rock. There we go. There we go. Ethan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, of course, bro. And this is a little bit later than we were supposed to start, but I had to make my uh, my little smoothie. I was actually you watching to, your vlog this morning about um, like getting your heart broken yep. because I'm actually going through that right now. Oh, um, shit. I'm sorry, within bro. The past... No, that's fine. It, it but I'm not is. sorry because of the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. And I saw I saw you make a smoothie, and I was like, you know what? That sounds good. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my that. cup of ambition of smoothies. Yeah, so have to. Um, I just sucked that, down my smoothie right before the interview, so Well there we go. I my I'll sugar levels are up right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need we need those sugar levels to yeah. be able to vibe for the day, you know. Hundred percent. Um so you started making these vlogs pretty recently, but like you you've been creating content uh, for a decent amount of time. I mean, yeah. looking back at your your uh, like Instagram and all where you post all your stuff. Right. Um, but what made you want to start talking about um, different vulnerable subjects that not a lot of people talk about? Like, not enough people talk about. Right. So there's obviously a decent amount, but like, not enough people talk about this kind of stuff. So right, right. So honestly, uh, you'd have to go really deep on my YouTube channel, and I definitely have a handful of the videos privated because I just like cannot even stomach to look at them. But uh. Aside from a couple skits, the first things I ever did were vlogs. Um, okay. That was like the first content I ever did when I was a senior in high school. I was making some vlogs and like going into that graduation summer. And even back then, like I remember trying to uh, talk about some more vulnerable things and like share some things. Like I had a, I had a girlfriend in high school and we like decided we were going to break up because I was going to school nine hours away and we were like, we're not mm-hmm. going to do that. Yeah. Um, but I remember, I, like, I, I made a video. That, of, I respect that, though. Honestly. We, we actually, the day we started dating, I got a call from my coach, and then I committed to play lax at my school the day we started dating. So then there was immediately Damn. just a nine-month timer where it's oh. like, all right. But it was definitely for the best. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember making a, even, like, a video about that, and it's, like, literally so corny and so poorly made. But I think that was always kind of what I, like, wanted to do. Um And then, you know, I went to college, but I didn't know anyone at my school. And I thought I was just going to be, like, bossed up and not give a fuck. But it turns out I did care what people thought about me. I just was, like, cocky because I had my homies from, like, fifth grade with me. And, like, everyone kind of knew what my vibe was. So no one was like, oh, Garland's doing some whack shit. Like, everyone was fine with it in high school, so I just did it. And then I, like, definitely was like, damn, this is kind of hard. So I just got away from it for a while and just, you know, did the more flashy stuff, tried to like do just like generic shit. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think honestly what I realized coming back to it, because like the first time I started talking more vulnerably again was like almost exactly a year ago. Um, That was like I made like my first YouTube video back in forever. And I was like, I'm going to try to do this shit. And I was talking about that and I had a TikTok like do decent on that first YouTube video that where I was just like, who cares? It doesn't like matter if your videos mm-hmm. suck or like like people aren't paying attention to you, whatever. That was just my first time like talking a little bit about it. Yeah. And it was like luck of the draw that it went. It didn't go viral, but it got like 35,000 likes or something. Okay. okay. And I mean, from on TikTok, that, yeah, you can, that's, yeah. that's, that's not bad. Right. It did decent. And like from that video, I just got enough 
messages and DMs. Some of them like more lighthearted where people were like, bro, I need to hear this. Oh my God. And then others were like more deep. Like this one kid literally hit me up and this was my first YouTube video back. And this kid hit me up and he was like, dude, I like went through chemotherapy for like the past two years and I've like been healthy for a year. And your video like reminded wow. me what I learned when I was on the brink of death. And like, that's not to say that like I'm smart, but what I realized is like, we're all going through the same shit. Yeah. Like everyone's yeah. going through the same exact shit. And so then that just really got me out of my head because like before then I feel like I was catering everything because I like wanted people to think it was cool. And like, I wanted people to think like I was like, lit at video editing or whatever and i could like make shit look dope and then i realized with that video because i just like talked I didn't like mm -hmm. script anything i didn't yeah was just i just kinda, like i'll go off the flow exactly i just like shared my human experience and then like that tapped in with a lot of people because we're all just dealing with like the same things they're yeah. just hard to say mm -hmm. out loud you know what yeah, i mean exactly exactly and it, i ah oh, you make such a good point on that because i've started doing this recently too and the amount like it's not even just when you're talking about it to the camera it is healing for you as well like right. writing that therapy out and being vulnerable it's like you don't need a therapist if you just have a yeah. camera and you're willing to just talk to it and like then other people can see that like okay we're not alone in this in this world because like exactly with, with how with with how you know social media portrays everything and all and how people have this profile that shows all the great things, but right. doesn't really show a lot. Most profiles do not show the, you know, the nitty the gritty, human aspect, the human aspect. Yes. Right. And like, right. I love that you, I love that you were do that you're doing that and you're doing a great job at it. And I, Thank you, you should bro. definitely continue doing it. Um, but what, what like pushed you back into it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Very good. What pushed you back into it when you said you stopped and then like right. one day you were like, no, I'm just going to do this again. What, what was the thing that like triggered you to go back and do this? I think it, you know, it was just like kind of the pressure of adulthood and like trying to figure my shit out because like when I was in college, like I was spending a lot of time like working on school cause it was a small school and like I was pretty invested in my major. So like that was the grind and like I was playing sports. So it was easy to just kind of make videos sometimes. And I remember like I sort of had an identity crisis when I graduated college Cause I'm like, okay, now I'm out of college and I'm like going to do video for a living and my shit's like not that good. <laughs> so, but like in my head, I was like, I should be good already. Yeah. Like, why am I not like making dope things? And so like for like five months after college, my creative process was so frustrating and unnatural. Cause I just felt like, I don't know, like I was following a lot of travel guys. Like I was watching all this like really like highly produced stuff. And I was just getting annoyed with myself because I'm like, my shit doesn't look like Sam Coulter's. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I just got so fed up. Straight like, up. I just got so over it. By the time it was, like, November, I think, of last year, I was like, dude, fuck this. Like, this isn't even fun. And when I used to make videos, like, there was no pressure because I was just a kid and it was a hobby. You know what I mean? But now yeah. it's like I had this idea that I need to, like, make a career and, like, figure my life out because I was working construction. And I'm like, I need to literally figure this shit out. So I, like... Don't hate yeah, because that's job. all you want to do. Yeah, because that's how we, right. I mean, I could tell by the by what you create and the way that you go about life. You don't want to be working a construction job. You probably nah. want to be doing something on your own, building your exactly. own kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So I think like that pressure is good. Like you have to get uncomfortable like that because it's what makes you hustle. And it's like what definitely got me focused. And like in the past, you know, I'd make a video here and there. And sometimes I'd go like months without editing. And then I'd like make some more videos. That was like kind of my college thing. I wasn't like super focused on it. Okay. So like that discomfort's good because then it's like shit. Like I'm gonna sit down for ten hours a day and like learn Premiere in a month and like try to go pro as quickly as possible. Because I was just like shittily editing in Final Cut too. Not that Final Cut's bad. I just like I hadn't like legitimized myself or like taken that step yeah. to make, take it seriously. Yeah. But oh, that, it's a switch too. It's a switch too. Like, like it'll be it'll it be just a moment. It'll just be a yeah. moment where you're like, fuck. You know 100%. what? I need it. I need to do this shit. So you need yeah. that pressure, but yeah, it's just, it's dangerous because that pressure also like pollutes your creative process and your honesty. Cause then you're just scrambling to like, be like the pros and be like these guys that are like doing dope shit. But ultimately yeah. like you, you got to still do your own thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You have to have so. your individuality. And also I believe you don't, you shouldn't be rushing to, 100%. to get to this point. I feel like it's all it's going to do <clears throat> is take time. There's that, there's that saying where, 
um, to become a master at something, you have to put 10,000 hours of work in. Yeah. And if you like calculated that out, it's something like five years or right. something like that. Of like, it takes time. Like, it takes a lot of time. I mean, like relative, like you obviously have sleeping time. You have other time that you have to do right. other stuff. So like, but sitting down and it's like about five to six years yeah. where you're like, go, go, go. And that's like the minimum if you were like, like always on it. So exactly, you know, it does take, it does take time and, and, but if you keep going at it and like stay consistent with it, that's where like, I believe that you're going to find exponential growth because you, every day that you're doing it and you're staying consistent, you're getting that much better. But like, I don't know, there's just a certain aspect of the consistency thing of like choosing to do it every day, even when you don't want to. Right. I've learned, I've recently seen that it's helped me grow more than it did when I was like, Oh, you know, I'll do a little bit here. I'll do a little bit there. Right. You know? And like, it's when you like start be running, a part of your lifestyle. Yeah. Like it has to be like, like, I don't know with passion and everything. And like when you're pursuing something that's a passion, um, it shouldn't be like a burden for you to do it every single day. And like, right. even when you are so tired and like, no, I don't want to do this right now. You still get up and do it because you, right. you know, want, that's what you want. Oh, dude. Exactly. Cool. And it's like, you have to do it, but then you also have to think that the only way you're going to be able to sustain it like that is if you get out of this like state of killing yourself for your work, not being that good. Yeah. Like when you like have your expectations through the roof and you've made like 10 videos, it makes making those videos feel so impossible because you want it to like be perfect and it's going to be trash for like the next 100 videos. So just get over it. <laughs> yeah, and then like yeah. <laughs> and then like once you just start pumping out trash, like that first YouTube video I made was literally me just being like, it doesn't matter. And then you kind of realize like, okay. I don't have that many expectations. It's not like a great video, but it's still good enough because I have been learning this stuff. So then it's like your standards are different than other people's. You yeah. know what I mean? And like yeah. people are going to enjoy it if they see it. Like they, someone that doesn't know how to make videos at all is going to think like a half decent video looks really good. Exactly. You're just yeah, comparing cause... yourself to whoever's better than you. Yeah. And there's always going to be someone that's better than you. That's, the, that's the bottom line. There's always someone that's either yeah. right behind you on your heels that's going to pass you up. Or there's exactly. someone that's fucking 10 times better than you. And like, that's, that's the race that we're in. It's like, we think that we need to be up here, but right. really at the end of the day, when we, like you said, expectations, dude, that word is like, if you have expectations, you are limiting yourself because yeah, you're screwing yourself over. You're screwing yourself. You're, you're, you're creating this mental game with yourself that doesn't need to be played. And yeah. then when you're playing it, you're, you lose automatically. Like right. if you have expectations, you lose automatically because most of the time those expectations are not met. And then you're in the, in the drain because you don't believe in yourself anymore. Exactly. Like, that's where people fail. I, I genuinely think that if you're looking at other people's content or whatever they're creating or whatever field you're in, if you're comparing yourself to that person, in a negative way, you're, you're, you're like, not, you're not, yeah. you're going to hold yourself back so right. much more time until you just let it right. go. Just right. let it go, dude. And the uh. other issue with like fully just, yeah. Focusing too much on someone else. It's like, I mean, I always use Sam Colder as an example because obviously he just, he he's wasn't the top. first person doing it, but he, he's the top dog and he like created a wave of people. And now there's so many people just trying to do <laughs> what he does. Right. Yeah. So then it's like, not only are you like, like you always have to race to be the best, but I feel like at least the way that I kind of have like diverted and like switched up my vibe and brought in like my original influences that I like used to like way more than like, I mean, not like, like more than Colder, but like Casey Neistat's videos speak to me more than Sam Colder's. Yes. His yes. just like blow my mind, but like, he's never like really like made me feel anything super profound or like, mm-hmm. but I love his shit. Like he's incredible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like all that's to say, and it was the same way with Casey it's Neistat. A, when it's, he aesthetically, was it's aesthetically, it's right, aesthetically pleasing though. Exactly. That's the thing. Like Casey Neistat, he's someone that talks about real shit on yeah. a consistent basis rather than right. like Sam Colder. He drops a video every three months about him and going and doing shit. fun shit and yeah. like, you know, doing all these crazy transitions. Right. Like, yeah, it looks cool. It looks right. cool. But, but like, like we issue, don't really know you. Exactly. And the issue with like, the issue with trying to make work exactly like whatever is like popular. So like right now and like the last like two years, I'd say that's the, like the colder style. But like when Casey was proper popping in like 2016, like everybody was copying Casey Neistat. 
mm-hmm. and you're kind of just fucking yourself over because then you're racing against like thousands of people all doing the same thing. So I feel like kind of like what my mentality has been like, I need to keep hustling and like try to be the best. But at this point, I don't know. It's like, I don't even know who does what I want to do. And I don't even know what I want to do, but I feel like I'm just like racing against myself now. Mm-hmm. And like I have inspirations, but like, I'm like, no one's going to do what I'm going to do just because I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. Yeah. And then it just like puts you in your own lane and it's like, it might not be good or like resonate with people for another few years, but I just like want it to be its own thing. Like yeah. right now, my biggest inspiration is fucking Emma Chamberlain. <laughs> Emma Chamberlain, why? Because her new oh, vlogs, so? bro. Her new vlogs are just like spacey and minimal really? and like stripped I back. Seen and them. She, dude, she like switched from like the really hyper like girly kind yeah. of just like yeah. vlog editing, and she's like always been lit. Obviously, I'm not. I really never watched her until the last couple months. Okay. But her new stuff is like just weird, and she films on a shitty ass camera. And she uses oh, okay. like really so... weird drony music and just weird angles. And I just like fuck with it because she just was like, I'm going to do some new shit. Hell yeah. And it's just like totally her own thing. And like people like it. And it's so That's anti dope. YouTube and like anti just like clicky, like short attention. I don't know. It's just cool. Oh, but but I'm, like, I'll have to check try... it out. I'll just check it out. Yeah, it's that cool, sounds bro. dope. If you go on her channel, like she switched from like hype thumbnails, you just will find like all lowercase, like boring titles with yes. really boring thumbnails. Yes. And yes. like obviously I love like, it. Dude, it's so sick. And obviously, like, you can't do that if you want to like grow. Yeah. Obviously, Emma Chamberlain is like a monster at this She's point. So there. she Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so she can she do can. whatever she wants. But it's still just like so so sick to me because she's just like fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean see the way you can you can start doing that once you get to that point. 100%. But then there's the people that have already gotten to that point and they're, <clears throat> they they continue to use this clickbait shit. And like, dude, okay, I, you know, I, I, I used to watch um, Justin Escalona vlogs all okay. the time. I don't know if you know who that is. He does I like, a, he, he created like, um, like street clothing. He has this like, he started this brand out of his dorm room at okay. USC and he started doing these like daily vlogs Sick. and it was all him like and he got really big like his his uh clothing brand got really big for a while nice um he was doing like a lot of streetwear he was like he had like billboards across like LA and New York and shit and like he was he was like building him, himself up and uh but every single time that like i would look at his videos the clickbait was like 15 seconds of the video and yeah. the rest of it was nothing even pertaining to yeah. what the thing was talking about right and I, it's just so it's just a it game creates this facade and like this like fake yeah fakeness of it and i and i stopped watching it because the clickbait stuff for me has no real desire because I, I we've been in the in the the like youtube world for a very long time right. since the start right we know what fucking clickbait looks like when yeah it's like obvious. It, like it's so obvious like people are not doing a good job no, uh, and that, that doesn't mean there. like you shouldn't you know make it engaging. Like Matt Diavella makes fucking great like clickable videos, but like you get what the title tells you you're gonna get. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just be straightforward about what you're yeah. getting. Don't be lying about. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about how you can make a hundred thousand dollars, and then it's you promoting your your merch class or, or yeah. merch for the first fifteen minutes, and then you get fucking yeah. two minutes of them talking about such vague type yeah. shit it's just it's it's uh yeah it's it, it people shouldn't be focusing so much more on the titles rather as creating the content yeah that is going to engage the the people you know right 100 percent. but um so what's what's kind of some of the topics that have been like oh for you you know going through your um, YouTube, you right. have like five videos right now at the front yep. that are like very vulnerable things, like very yep. vulnerable topics. So out of those, which one of those videos or which one of those topics so far has like had the most impact on you when you're creating it? Uh, it's like hard to say. Cause whenever I make them, it's you. And it's funny. Cause like my content, just like I'll have a month of just being so dead ass. But, like, I haven't posted a YouTube video because I'm just clowning on TikTok right now. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. 
They're just making skits and like being an idiot. You're so still kind creating of, content though, so that's good. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It just like depends on my vibe and like I don't want to like I never want to be too serious and like vulnerable because that is a part of me. But like people that know me day to day, like I'm so much more of a bullshitter than mm. I am just like this guy that's like trying to be deep all the time. I just yeah, yeah. like the videos like that are just like usually therapy for me. So like uh, one of them what was it? I I don't remember. It was like when I first flew my drone just by my house and I was just like having a down day. I, sometimes it's just like, I literally have to hit record to get myself out of the creative rut. So some of the Mm. vlogs are like me making a video because I'm like, just like not, not feeling it. And so like, it's like, I have to reverse engineer it and do the thing to like get my spark back. Um, Oh, I I don't even like, I never really thought of that. Yeah, it's like you got to kind of do it, but I don't even remember what – I mean, let me look at, like, the videos because I don't even remember what they're about <laughs> because it's, like – That's how it goes, though, honestly. Right. Like, you create a video, and then, like, you you don't look, really look back at it because you already went through that experience, and, like, you got that knowledge, and you shared exactly. it out, and then you're and already like, on just, to the next thing. And I'm – every time in these videos, I'm just talking about, like, what had me fucked up that day. So <laughs> it's, like, it sounds like I'm, like, giving advice, but it's really just, like – I got to figure this shit out, dog. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, yeah, yeah. that's like all it is. Um, yeah. And I think that one, like the one that I have called Stop Guilting Yourself. And I think I talked about it at the end where it's like, it's chill. Like it doesn't matter because if I like have a few off days or I don't make any videos or I start to feel not creative, I beat myself up for not having done something. Mm-hmm. And that was literally what I was doing that day. And so then like the message of that video was like, it doesn't matter what you didn't do. Just like do something now. And then if you don't do something now, that doesn't matter. Do it like in five minutes, yeah. just do it. Like that's all you can do. And it's literally and just so you're me. pretty much talking to yourself talking about myself, like bro. what you're going through on this thing. Yeah. And like you just have, it's instead of having like a person there, you're just talking to a fucking camera. Yeah. And I'm then literally just talking it. to myself and like, it just, I'm just, I only keep going just cause I like get these DMS that are just kind of heavy sometimes, but like usually just nice to hear where people are like, dude, I literally fuck I needed to hear that. And I'm like, same bro. Yeah. Same see, that, here. That, I love that. I love that. Cause you're creating something that is helping you heal while also helping others heal because that right. is true vulnerability. Like right. you're opening up about the shit that you're going through in that moment and people, when you see something like that, when you watch something or hear something or speak to someone about something like this, you know when they're genuinely being vulnerable. Right. And it shows in the way they're talking, the, the con- like conviction in their voice, right. the way they're portraying themselves and the way that they're being just, you know when someone's being transparent. Yeah, you can tell when someone's being, being like open with you for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that's just the... That's like the one thing that create I me personally I think creates the most amazing content because yeah. you're not only creating content that people can relate to but like can that people can like grow from in their right. in their life for that day like you never know who you're going to influence with what you say and if you portray yourself as like a dick then right. that's just how you're going to get perceived but if you're willing to be vulnerable and like right. actually help people you're growing like a, a community that like wants to listen to you. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Man. And it takes time. And like, I get that. It's like, like talking to the camera is fucking weird. I honestly, I've only transcended that in like the past few months and even still like in public, I'll get like a little weird sometimes, but like it has yeah. taken me realistically like a decade of on and off making videos to like, I, I just like don't give a fuck when I talk to the camera now. And I want to like lean into that even more and like treat the camera like a person physically. Yeah. So I want to like start like grabbing the camera and like pinning it to the ground and yelling at it and just like getting like way too intimate with the camera. Yeah. Just to like really break that fourth wall and like be like, I'm fucking talking to you, motherfucker. Whoever's out there, just like yelling into the void. Dude, I, I no, I like that. I really like. I I want to see a video from you doing that because yeah, like just that, beating the shit out of my camera, just, yeah, <laughs> just wailing on it. I'll make get it the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I Next I up. think that that would be really cool though, because like you're. I was watching this video on Masterclass, um, and it was talking. I can't remember who it was, but he's talking about storytelling, and he talks about how when he is performing or when he is talking to the camera, 
he treats it as if he's talking to someone. So like, yeah. if we're right here, if, if I didn't have this screen on of you, like looking on my right side, right. I would just be talking to this. Like I am talking to you right, right now. And like, I'm hearing your response in my head and like, right. And, and he goes, that's where you're going to get the most engagement because you're treating this. They're, they're thinking that they're literally sitting there talking to yeah. you. You, you have know, to like they're cut like through that screen. Yeah, yeah, and that that I think is such a crucial like there's a moment where you're going to realize, "Oh, okay. Like break through this. This is not it's not just a screen. This is like I'm talking right. to to you the person. right now. I'm talking like, to you." Yeah, you know? that's literally what like cuz I had a lot of anxiety trying to post my first YouTube videos again last year just cuz it had been so long. And even was now, it like I, the, was it the fear of it? Was it the fear of, po of posting yeah, and being and like willing like, to you, put your shit when, out? Yeah. And I think it's also just like when you lose momentum, because even now, like if I go a week or two without talking to the camera, which like I haven't in a long time because I'm trying not to do that. But if I like give it a little bit of time, I just start to notice that I'm like, I lose my rhythm and I start to kind of like feel its presence again. Mm. So you like got to keep it human. But the thing that I've like, that's switched it in my head is it's like, I tell myself that I'm just getting on a FaceTime that no one's going to pick up until after the fact. It's like, mm. I'm FaceTiming someone. I yeah. just don't know who's going to answer. And like, <laughs> who's going to like, listen to me say some bullshit. But like, it's a person. You know what I mean? It's like you said, like, it's yeah. a, there's a human being out there that's going to like, see this shit, even if it's one person. So, but it just takes practice. And like, I have a lot yeah. of people ask me like, how to like get more comfortable or whatever. And I literally just, it's like, if you have an idea for a YouTube video and you want to make a YouTube video, but you're freaking out because you don't want to talk to your camera. I think you should literally sit in your room and record for 25 minutes and like get yourself to ramble about mm. nothing and don't even post it. And like, don't even have an agenda. Like you need to just talk to the camera Yeah. about nothing. Or like, if yeah. you need to like, you know, like scream or just like do some weird, like whatever gets that just gets you out of your head. You got to do it. And I think it's like easier to get better at it if you have no intention of posting it. Cause then you can just like basically yeah, be a crazy a person in your room and just talk yeah. to the camera. You don't even have to hit record, honestly. Like, yeah, you have to be willing to, to do, be crazy, like not yeah. be crazy, be crazy. It's, it's the act of like doing the thing that is outside of our societal norm, talking to a camera fucking 10 years ago when it cameras was bizarre. Was, that was dude if you're walking down the street and i saw someone talking to the camera i think they were a fucking crackhead yeah. like on it just honestly yeah, 100%. and that stigma stigmas last for so long like yep. you know in california weed is legal but people still get scared of oh no it's such a bad thing but it's right. legal out here you know it's like drinking but drinking right. has been legalized for so long in the culture that now it's the culture but it, it, culture changes our cultural changes take way longer than right. once that initial like okay no this is this is okay you right. know so i think people still have this in their head oh people are gonna judge me for sharing my stuff out people are right. gonna judge me for um talking to the camera in public and look at me weird right like that's that's what was holding me back for a very long yeah, time i've been wanting to scary. do a vlog it's a scary but it's like a scary thing the reason you have to get over it is because like, I think we like people around our age and older still feel that way. But like kids that are 12 right now and everyone younger than them, like talking to the camera is going to be so normal. And you can even tell, oh, yeah. like when I look at like the dynamic of TikTok compared to vine, like when I was on vine, most people still weren't like posting on vine. Like yeah. I was posting tons of vines when I was like a freshman in high school and like my friends and like people would make them, but it was never like them being like, making a joke like it was still like super uncommon and i was like really the only person i knew in like my area that was my age like trying to make vines yeah outside of just like pointing at your friends and like making noise but yeah, now yeah. if you look on tiktok <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like most kids like have made a tiktok like most kids have talked to the camera at some point or at the very least lip synced at the camera yeah, so like yeah <laughs> it's getting like more normal and it's only going to become like more and more present you know what i mean yeah very true. And and with this whole COVID thing, uh, I think that, you know, my little brother, he's eight right now, and he was having to go to do Zoom calls for school yeah. when they couldn't go into class. So right. 
they're getting so comfortable talking to even just a screen or someone right. else, right. you know? And like, I mean, the technology, the way it's going and the way, you know, we have the metaverse coming up. Right. That is a com- like that. I I, oh, I I wonder how vlogs are going to happen when Dude, the metaverse is like a full thing. Like, are people going to be having a mask on with then in their metaverse, they're taking a video with their virtual camera? Right. right. Like, uh, well, I literally don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I'm just going to like, <laughs> let, I'm going gonna, gonna to let that play its own course. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Speculation just going to freak me out. Yeah, very true. But I mean, it's it's dude, it's getting it's gonna come. Oh, yeah. I, I I just know for a fact it's gonna be here soon. But I saw a video like yesterday from a guy. I forget his name, but I follow him. He has a cool podcast. But he was saying like, pretty much like talking on camera should not be taught in public in schools like public speaking at this point. Because 100%. like the like the modern day like talking on camera and being able to like be comfortable and articulate for the internet is is public speaking. Yes. Like it's not because you're not in person, but it is like it's such it's such a massive form of like communication. So it's 100 percent. I think it's fair though. like if you don't want anything to do with content, like so be it. There's still like other things you could like just say fuck it. But like if you at all want to like have that skill, like you got to just learn it at this point. 100 percent. 100 percent. And if you want to have a presence just in as a whole outside, if you're not trying to be a worker bee. And just live an average life where you're working a nine to five and sitting right. at home and not doing anything for yourself. Okay, do your thing. Okay. Right. If you do want to be in this world, like you said, I've learned that this for this skill of communicating with people, you know, whether it's either if it's in person or through this camera or yeah. through sharing out my my journey and my story the amount of growth that I've seen with even just the way I talk to people and portray yeah. myself now. Yeah. I used to, before when I first started, if I went to my first episode of this podcast and saw or, and listened to how I talked, I, I would, I would be like, why is this guy yeah. running a podcast right now? Yeah. Cause he talks like a child. Yeah. But, it's so hard at the beginning, dude. Your voice is like all shaky and you just are Yeah. You're yourself. nervous. You're, you're yeah. putting all, all of these filler words in right and it just sounds like not not professional no. and you but you just have to keep going at it and continue to put do it over and over and right. over again and over again and over again until you don't even realize that you have gotten better right. i have to look back at my videos and 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 podcasts and i can now listen and hear wow I'm I'm now patting myself on the back just because I've gained a skill that right. I've been trying to like progress at and now right. I'm finally seeing that I'm actually getting better at it. Right. Like you're actually you out know? here doing this shit and then it just starts to become normal. Like it doesn't it just takes like consistency and like dropping your ego to get past yes. that insecurity on camera. Yeah. Like you just have, have to like drop your ego. How have you dropped your ego? Because the way the way you portray yourself on social media and in your YouTube videos, you act like you just don't give a fuck. You yeah. have this attitude where you're like just trying to be funny. You are just trying to make people laugh and and be you're just being like this genuine person where you're not. Right. I could tell that it's like genuinely you when you're right. on there. So how did you drop your ego? What what was a breaking point for you where you were like I fuck this. Dude, I don't even think it was a breaking point. It was literally, it was just a slow, long progression. Because okay. like, when I was like younger, I was I was pretty confident, honestly. And like, even like, like I was saying in high school, like, I felt like those videos were more authentic because I was confident and not thinking too much about my perception. But that was because I already had the approval of like everyone in my high school was cool with me. I had homies from sports, like I'd grown up with all these people, so I just didn't have a reason to give a fuck. Like even mm-hmm. as a freshman in high school, I was making those vines and my friend's older brothers like thought they were funny. So then it's like, okay, cool, juniors think these are funny, so I guess I'm yeah. like, I guess it's yeah. fine. So like- I feel I, like that I was, builds up the ego though. I feel like that does, build, that could build. It does in the sense, but it never like made me cocky. It just, I just felt really comfortable. 
Okay. Like I, okay. I was, I was lucky enough to not like, because some people like have a shitty time in high school. And I think I was lucky enough to like be, I think I was just like really embraced and accepted because of just, you know, like sports helped and like certain friends I had and like their older, it was just like, you know, cause high school is kind of a status game and like you have to get yeah. people's approval. But I was lucky enough to like have most people's approval. Like no one was like shitting on me. Yeah. And so I think that like made it easier. So it was pretty free flowing, but that was because I hadn't really been like challenged at. And that was where college was kind of a mind fuck because yeah. forever, for most people, college is where you like go find yourself and like become an authentic version of you. And I feel like I just took like five steps back and it wasn't really? that I was, it wasn't that I was ever being fake in college. It was just, I was giving people like 50% me. I was like, you're not like, I just didn't cause because full me like sticks out and it's just fucking it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like and like when you make YouTube videos like that, especially if you're a freshman in college and no one knows you and you're just dropping like vulnerable YouTube videos, people are gonna hate on you. Yeah. Because like people don't know you yet. In high school people didn't hate because they were like, That's just Ethan doing whatever the fuck yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they'd known exactly. me for like ten years, so they were like, Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was where kind of just the the ego like took me over because i was just like really just didn't want to be too offensive and i like, wanted to be well liked in college so i just kind of like I, I was still like you know myself in person with people i just like wasn't putting myself out there like that Got it. i was like i don't want to like i don't want to like make myself a target or whatever you and didn't so want to any waves in a way yeah i didn't i didn't want to like disrupt the vibe or be too and i'd still do little things to kind of like push on like the social norms and stuff mm -hmm. but i was was not ready to like send it and yeah. i think where it just fully dropped again was like i graduated college and once you're out of college and you're an adult it's like who no the fuck am i fuck. like this no is the one whole, fuck, yeah this though. is the whole world now so it's like i had yeah. to like I, the last year or like a year after college was just building back that like blind confidence i had in high school mm-hmm and so it's just now it's like, and like, I'm more humble now because I'm like trying to build a career and I actually have like financial pressures and like, I'm not like, I don't think I'm like God's gift to earth. I'm just at a point now where I've been through the cycle of like really being myself and then like not feeling super comfortable. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, I'm just 24. Like what the fuck else am I? I'm not going to like not be myself when I'm 30. The yeah. Fuck. So yeah, yeah. no, it's, dude, been, a, I, it's I, just been a slow progression. I, I, I could see that. I could see that. And that that's interesting that you said you went up and then down and then back up right. because like we go through these journeys through life where you have to understand these highs and then you have to go through lows to be able to get you back to that yeah. high. Like, I mean, exactly. You have to go through these ups and downs to be able to understand, okay, no, like, this is that's not like what, what I shows want. you who you actually are. Like, exactly. Okay. Exactly. If you, if we were right here all the time, like right. what, what, you know, how right. would life, would life would be so bland. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be really doing anything. And like those emotions right. are, are needed. Um, exactly. And people, and people will make a few things and like start to feel good about it, but then you'll second guess yourself and like back out. But yeah. some people like once they back out, they back out. I've forever, I've forever. stepped in and backed out. Like in sixth grade, I made a couple of cross stringing videos. Those are my first mm -hmm. ever YouTube videos. <laughs> and I was like, this is so lit. And then I felt like a loser. I was like, fuck, I have YouTube videos. All my friends are going to think I'm so whack. So then I kind of hit them and like privated them. And then in eighth grade, I was just like big into gaming. And I was like, I wanted to be a YouTuber literally for fucking forever. So I started making COD commentaries and Minecraft commentaries. I was like, that's lit. Then I went to high school and I was like, dog, those are so fucking nerdy. So I deleted them. And literally, I wish I hadn't deleted any of those videos. I think they might be on my old computer that I can't get access to because I'm just locked out of it. <laughs> But like I, I've stepped in and then delete same when I went on to college, like senior year of high school, I was making a bunch of videos again. I had like 20 videos on YouTube and then I removed almost all of them once I went to college. Cause I was like, I, don't, I only want people to see the more normal ones. So yeah. I've like stepped in and backed out countless So times. you're creative. You're a creative. I mean, yeah. Like and then I feel eventually like we, we... you got to step in and stay in. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you have to see those, those things that keep pulling you back those certain fields of, 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 or skills that you want to learn and you try it out and then 
you just back out but then it, it something right. in your head brings you back to it and yeah, you keeps bringing you back. back to it i'm like okay you know what there's a, there's only a certain amount of times where you, where you find out to realize okay you know what maybe i should just fucking commit to this because yeah, gotta do i it. genuinely want to do this and if i don't I know now because I've felt those same things where yeah. I like will make videos and I stop and I make content and I stop yeah. and, I, and I'm just like, it's just a fucking constant back and forth. Yeah. And now I look at it and I'm like, okay, I've been wanting to make a fucking vlog for seven years. Yeah. I'm going to make a fucking vlog. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm done doing this game where I'm going back right. and no, no, yes, no, yes, right. no. Like this is obviously something I meant to do. And if I don't do it now, I'm going to regret it later on in life. And right. I don't want to regret this shit. Right. Like, I don't want, I don't want to look back and be like, Oh, I, t I literally told myself for seven years that I wanted to do this. Yeah, now it's 20 it. years later and I fucking still have not done it. What right. the hell? Like, what the fuck am I doing? At yeah, least exactly. try it out. At Clock least try it out. It. Right. You know? And it's like, even, like if you, send it. even if you fail, like, like all those, even like, like, I guess to answer your question, because you were saying, like, okay, it seems like I don't really give a fuck on camera. Like, yeah. that is the culmination of my stringing videos, my COD commentaries, my high school videos, my, like, hundreds of vines. Like, it, I'm, I seem relatively new to content because I've only become more consistent and, like, public within the last year and a half. But it's, like, I've been literally fighting myself since I was 11. You know what I mean? And it's, like, I'm still not even at the point where I want to be. But mm -hmm. that's that's how you get to the point where you're like feel comfortable on camera and sharing yourself online. You have to do right. it a hundred times, feeling like shit about it. Unless you're just yeah. a savage, like you know who uh, Sneeko <laughs> is. Who the YouTuber Sneeko? No, bro, he's a savage. And this kid's been <laughs> making shit since COD commentaries, and I literally hate myself because his YouTube channel he's lit. He's almost has like a million subs now, and that kid really okay. doesn't give a fuck. Like he does not give really? a fuck, bro. And okay, I'm gonna have to watch him. I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna go he, back when yeah. I'm editing this. And I'm gonna like, fucking make sure I watch that. He's like controversial sometimes, and like he can be kind of a dickhead, but like he's so just dead ass himself. And he's been making YouTube videos since like middle school, and he has all of his COD commentaries up. He has these shitty skits from high school up. He has every single thing on his YouTube still, and I think that's literally so ill because I'm like, I was too bitch. Yeah, but yeah, this guy, yeah. but this guy didn't give a fuck. I was like too concerned with like being popular and like not upsetting the like social the norm. whatever. He was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna be an outcast. I don't give a shit." And he's just been doing this shit. And dude, he's see, a, that's the thing that creates. There's he's the black sheep. Yeah, you know? he's a savage, like, bro. He's a fucking and and you have respect for him though. That's the yeah, hundred percent. Like, see, what I've noticed is that with with these these certain things like. You said you don't want to break the societal norm at your school, yeah. But the people that actually make a difference and like, and like create change and 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 create shit that like people love, they're the ones that are doing the shit that yeah, no one care. else is yeah, doing. 100%. They don't give a fuck. You have to you literally know? not like, give a fuck. No, not to like, like proper fuck it. make waves. Fuck and it. And it's yeah, like yeah. I have a tattoo. Literally, I got this Beast. at eighteen, and it says "fuck it," and I'm like, yeah. dude, f I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't like fuck you, fuck you. I'm gonna yeah. do what I want to do. It's all you, you know? can do, man. Like we could, yeah. You could fucking die tomorrow. I mean, it's cliche, but it's so true. It's very true. It's and very yeah, it's true. like you never I don't know. know. And I think it's also easy, like when you are. I think the kind of the lie I like told myself, even in high school when I was like doing, I was doing my own thing, and in college I was doing my own thing. But it's like, I think it's like I would push social norms and be myself and like kind of like confuse people a little bit but like i would do it in this really dialed back way that would still allow me to like be accepted into their group so it's okay. like i'm being myself and i'm not giving a fuck but i'm like still totally filtering it yeah so that everyone like just is cool with me or whatever mm -hmm. it's like i don't want to like i don't want to go too far because then that'll like bug some people and i'll probably like have some people talk shit about me yeah but yeah, once once you're like out here and like out of school, what option do you have? Yeah, like it's very literally true. just you with six billion people. Yep, mm -hmm. really and no do, choice. Doing that, see, I I feel like college is like a grace period. It's a, it's the transition period. The loading from, screen. It, exactly, it's the yep. loading. I love that. It's the loading screen where you just 
or you are now getting pushed out into the real world and it's yep. either you get pushed out straight out or you go through this slow four-year process to five-year process right. where you can kind of you know put your feet in the water for a little bit right sort of figure it out start but living like it's still on a your simulation own. Yeah, it's still a simulation. Yeah. You haven't even stepped out into the fucking GTA yet. Like yeah. where you no one around you really is paying attention to you. Right. You know, like cuz I I dropped out of college after a year and a half. Yeah. And when I dropped out, no one. I all my friends were at college. Yeah. You know, I was back in back in my hometown. I was living at my parents' house. Right. Like and all I did was just I was by myself, you yeah. know? And then I, you know, later on, I, as time went on, I started slowly getting back into, you know, making friends, right. having a significant other, all this stuff. But dude, when you first get pushed out, there's no one, there's literally alone. no one you're alone. Like, yeah. unless you have it set up where you're like, kind of already in that transition, that alone period, while it sucks for a little bit, it's the most, the time where like I grew the most at least. Yeah. hundred percent. You need it. You know, that's what, that's just kind of what like pushes you into your element and you start yeah. asking, you start asking better questions. Cause you're not just comfortable, like riding this wave with the people you've been hanging out with or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have a question actually, cause you yep. talk, we, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning about that. Uh, the one with the heartbreak the reason I'm asking this, obviously, like I said, like I'm kind of going through this right now. So I want right. to hear your perspective on it. But you talk about how you need to get your heart broken. Like that was 100%. the thing. And I like when I saw that this morning and I was looking through, I was like, I need to watch that. Yeah. I was like, I need that. I need to watch right now because that's just so ironic that I'm going through this shit right now and I'm about to yeah. interview him. Like, <laughs> so I want to I want to hear your perspective on it and why you think that heartbreak can be a good thing because I see, I see right. where you're coming from, but I want to hear, I want to hear it on a deeper level. Right. Right. So I think, I mean, obviously everyone needs that like first love where you're just head over heels and like you experience what like love maybe could feel like. Right. Cause it's like a part of life. And like, I've always been kind of like hopelessly romantic and that's how I was with my high school girlfriend. Um, and so, like I said, like we like agreed on the breakup and it was planned. So like, it was like healthy and not too dramatic. Right. Mm -hmm. but like it definitely had me fucked up my entire freshman year of college because yeah. I was at this new school where I didn't know. I mean, I, I had homies and like I was playing lacrosse, but I, I wasn't with like my really tight homies from high school anymore. And I just like had this gaping hole in my heart. Um, and I kind of experienced it with her within high school too, because like we were on and off a little bit. So she like low key broke my heart like three times. Mm -hmm. Um, now uh, I'm like stupid lit that. and I'm like super yeah. loved, so it doesn't matter. But, um, but at I the time, though, it fucking hurts, bro. The reason it's good is just because it like propel if you're willing to like embrace it and not be super defensive and like make up bullshit stories in your head about how fucking shitty they are as a person. If you just like let that take over you, it is the most it like gives you the trippiest few months of your life because you're just like really feeling shit and that's like a part of life so i just think for me it's always like snapped me out of whatever's going on in my head and like shot me into evolution like it makes me like i know myself as well as i do because i've had my fucking heart ripped out like three times it like makes you get on your own shit and i feel like i was always the way i always took heartbreak was like okay, we just, these two people just split off. All I can do is work on myself. And then it's like, if they also are working on themselves, maybe we end up back together because we're on the same level. But if not, like I'm going to get somebody on my level because I'm getting to a level or whatever. So it like can't be a bad thing. Obviously, like it can go down poorly if like your girl cheats on you or something. Mm -hmm. But in general, I just think it like, it just catapults you into this, place where you're not just like content and going through the motions again you're like holy fuck like i don't know it's just like everything hits a little bit differently like my sister had a pretty uh she had a rough breakup a year ago they're back together and i like literally love her boyfriend but mm -hmm. they just had some time apart and like it definitely like was really hard on her and she had like a really rough year but even she like when i was on the phone with her she was just like i feel so much more confident in myself now and like i just know myself and I think that's how it was for me. And I don't know. It just, I just think it's literally so fucking trippy, but it's like some of the most beautiful 
it's some of the most beautiful like times I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. Like music hits different. The air hits different. Everything is just like on a different plane because your life was like this. And all of a sudden the story just fucking changed. Yeah. Like within a day, like you're, you're in a different chapter now mm-hmm. immediately. And then that's just always like had me fucked up and it like hurts and it's fucking terrible, but it's literally so good. Yeah. Because it like, it's so easy good. to get, it hurts it's easy so to good. get comfortable. Right. And like, I don't know. And I don't think until you've gone through that first, like legit heartbreak where you were like stupid love. And then you just like got fucked. Um, I don't think you can like find someone. Cause now I like, I'm three and a half years in with my current girlfriend. Okay. Um, and she's the shit. And she's like so much more like me than my high school girlfriend. And we're like way more compatible. And I think she's just like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like talk shit on my high school girlfriend. She's like, a, she's a good person. Yeah. But like, we're, just not, yeah. we're not at all like, like each other at this point. Like I haven't seen her in a while, but mm-hmm. my Lida is literally just so much more like my other half in a way that just was not the case with like the puppy love of high school. Yeah. Like we're like a proper unit. And it's only because like I went through that heartbreak and it's annoying as fuck because it took me a year of freshman year of college to get over uh, my high school girlfriend. I had my closure with her. We talked. Then I went to my summer camp like the next week where I worked and met my girlfriend. And it was like, I thought I was going to like get to fuck around and like not care about girls for a while. Because all of high school, I like. It doesn't happen like that, bro. Dude, all of high school. It doesn't happen like that. It's just like, I just was like, fuck, I thought I had more of like a loading zone because all of high school, my eyes were set on this one girl. And then yeah. freshman year of college, I was just fucked up. And then immediately after I'm like, oh, okay, I'm bet. Like I'm chilling now. I feel really good. I just like fall in love with this other girl. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. I know. But it all, it, all know worked, dude. it all worked out for the best though. We're, we're yeah, out here I just feel that. riding the wave. So hell yeah. Good. Yeah, good. I, just just... I mean, you guys look at, you guys look very happy together. I mean, like there's we like, are, I saw dude. and I don't try, you I try the try pictures like... you guys have and everything. Yeah. Like you guys seem like you're on the same wavelength, which is hundred percent are. And I try not, you know, I, I think some people like post too much and overcompensate and like, I don't ever want to yeah. do that, but like, she's like dead ass, just really like the coolest person I know. Hell yeah. So hell it's yeah. just, well, easy, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Thank you, man. You make some very good points with that kind of stuff. Like, you need to go through that heartbreak to grow. I mean, see, for the longest time, like, I had one serious girlfriend yeah. or two serious girlfriends in high school. I went to college. I didn't do, I didn't really date, like, seriously, seriously. Yeah. Uh, and then when I came back, that's when I found the most, most recent one. But I've always yeah. been, like, a fucking relationship person. Yeah. And while I was in those relationships, they were amazing. But afterwards, like... The first girlfriend I had, I was obsessed with her for like two years until we started yeah. dating. Yeah. And then we started dating and then like a year and a half later, we broke up. And by the way, this person, I know that we've talked about this, but like I could see before where she was coming from. This is a complete side note. But yeah, of course. I started dating the next girl a week later, week yeah. and a half later. I didn't go through the healing process. I didn't do that shit. Yeah. And so I jumped into this other thing. And that person, while I know that you know what we're talking about, if you're listening, is like, I could see where she was coming from, where she thought that I did something right, fucked up beforehand and then jumped into this, like thinking I just jumped. But, you know, you need to take time. Like you need to be willing to take time because like I didn't take time. And I jumped into this relationship with someone that I didn't even know yeah. and like started dating her for two years. And while, yes, we had an amazing time, we were not compatible at all. Right. Like I wasted two years of time, not wasted, but I went through two years of time that I could have been focusing on my yes. own self and building myself rather right. than being in this relationship that I was just being in it because I wanted to be in a relationship. Right. You that's know? that's and, the fucking key right there, dude. It's like, you're not going to get, you're not going to have like the relationship you deserve until you get in a relationship with yourself. Yeah. It's just not going to come. And that was how it, like it went with Lida. Cause I had that, I had the full year after, uh, with my high school girlfriend. And then I like gained feelings for Lida that summer, but we didn't start dating until the next summer after that. Mm-hmm. So then like I had all of sophomore year of college to just like do my own thing. And like, she was always in the back of my mind, but we worked at, we were long distance and we worked at this camp for four years or three years. So we just had summers together and then like the next summer we ended up together, but then we kept like the relationship technically an open relationship until like seven months later. 
And like neither of us fucking did that at all. It was more just to like keep the pressure off of it and like take that time. Yeah. So then it's like once we like got together, it was just like, all right, we already are together. We just haven't said it yet. So yeah. 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 You need need that time. Cause once you're like on your shit, like you're on your own shit right now, you're doing your own thing. mm -hmm. You have until you do that. Like once you do that, it's literally, it's like magic. Cause then when someone comes along, they're going to be the right person. Yeah. Cause you've like figured your bullshit out. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you've like gotten your own zone and like, you gotta like know how to love yourself like that before you can have a really good relationship with someone. Oh, I completely agree. And I also, you know, when I, when I dropped out and came home, I had about, you know, six to nine months where I was by myself. I was right. literally living in my house. I was not, I didn't have any friends. I was just doing my own shit. Right. And then my girlfriend came into play. Yeah. And when we met, I was like, okay, like the, it was amazing. I, the relationship, I have nothing bad to say about it. Yeah. You know, we had our ups and downs, like every relationship has, but that was by far the most amazing relationship. Yeah. And the only reason, the only reason that I ended it really was because I knew that I needed to focus on my shit right now. Yeah. And that is okay. Yeah. hundred percent. At first, at, for the longest time I wasn't, I was staying in it because I love her. Like I love her to, with everything. But at the same time, I was like, I was choosing her over myself for a lot of things. Right. So I didn't have like that individuality anymore because I had it right. before I knew what it felt like. And then I dropped yeah. it to be with this girl. Cause I love her. And I'm like, I like just told him like, look, like we need to, we need to like work on ourselves right now. We need to focus on our own shit because we were both kind of doing this like 50, 50 becoming a whole rather than two holes experiencing life together, you know? And so I, I always have that special, she'll always have that special place, but I need to choose myself over that. So, you know, if with anybody listening, if you're going through anything like, like in a relationship and you're feeling something pulling you in a different direction, figure out if it's yourself trying to find yourself because you do, you can always come back. You know, if, if you really take the time to like be your own person, then come back, you can, you can make it work, but you need to actually go through that because if you don't, you're just going to resent that person. Right. Forever. And if you want to never have it again, and if you want to make it even easier and like, this is, this is kind of what I've always done. It's like, you gotta be, I think, some people like I get like it's fine to like date more casually and people are chill with it but I'm like I get really dead ass in my head about these things and I'm like hey if I'm with someone and I'm not happy with myself I'm gonna be a shitty dad I'm gonna be a shitty husband and my family unit's gonna be a fucking mess with this girl because I have not figured out my life yet Mm -hmm. so it's like that's that that can at least pull you out of like just feeling selfish about it. Cause I think that's where it's easy. It's like, well, I don't want to hurt them. Like yeah. just to like selfishly look out for myself, but you got to expand that and be like society relies on functional units. Yes. And like, you got to fuck it. You owe it to her and literally the whole world to figure your shit out first before you can date anyone. Because one yeah. day you might have kids. And if you're going to have fucking kids, you better be on your shit and your wife better yeah. be on her shit too. Straight up, dude. Because you're having Straight kids, dog. And like up. we like need you're... kids to have a good life. Yes. Yeah. And you're building, you're building like, dude, kids, it doesn't matter if they're your children. It's if you're teaching someone, if you're teaching the younger youth, you're literally creating what the future is going to hold. Right. Like, dude, teachers and parents are, they need everything. to be, they're everything. They're every and like dude, teachers need to be paid more. And I believe that teachers need to actually like, if you're going to be a teacher, you need to genuinely love what you're talking about. 100%. And gen- like, cause there's so many teachers out there that, that just do it for the paycheck. Right. Which is, it is terrible because they're really fucking up all the rest of the people. Cause if you don't have like this passion and like really believe what you're saying, right. how the fuck is anyone else going to like really pick up on it? You right. know what I mean? They got to find know. it for themselves. I, teachers, teachers, uh, like good teachers come a dime a dozen, you know? Yeah. And that's why 100%. I think like mentors within your field that like are genuinely in your field. If you're trying to do something like find the person that is at the top of their game and is genuinely doing the thing that they love. Right. If you could find them and have them at, like ask them some questions and, pick their brain oh 
you're fucking Game over. on a roll. You know, Game you're, over, you're, bro. you're gonna you're gonna start stepping up. You know, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, we dug in there have, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you do, bro. You have to be willing to hit people up and yeah. collaborate with people too. Like yeah. you have to be willing. Like if you have something that you want to build or something that you want to learn, fucking why not learn it from the top guy? And right. if you don't, if the top guy says no, just go to the fucking next guy, number two, right. number three. You'll find someone that'll help you out. That's a, that's better than you. That's right. really the first thing. Like find someone that's better than you, and and ask them questions. Like yep. be willing to ask questions and ask for help. Though asking for help is like the biggest, I think one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. Yeah. Be willing to ask for help. Yeah. Because it's okay. People are willing to help you if you ask. Ask for help and buy people's classes. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally spent so much money on like courses and I literally have you wor- actually worth worth every penny. Oh yeah, bro. When I fucking really Yeah, when I was when I was doing construction and like half ass editing and final cut, I I copped uh Colder Creative right when it dropped. Because I needed to learn Adobe because I was I, not like, because I know you can like do it in Final Cut, but I was like, if I'm going to work with agencies and like work with other people, everyone's in Adobe. And I knew Colder was teaching Premiere and stuff, but like that class was 800 bucks and I had probably $1,300. And I was like, fuck it. And then in a month, You're I got- You're investing in yourself though. You're investing in yourself. Yeah. And so. like within a month, I was like ripping in Premiere and then an agency hired me full time and I didn't even apply or look for a job. So it's like really buy courses. If you like want to do some shit and you want to waste no time, find a good course and drop a grand on it, bro. That's what my roommate did. My roommate is a, he's a tech house producer. He's filthy. He's filthy with it. But he literally went from not knowing how to like use Ableton to releasing on labels within a year. And that's because during quarantine, he just was a psychopath. He was in college still. And he would just literally produce for like 10 hours a day. But right when shows shut down, DJs weren't like getting paid any money. Yeah. So a few artists were like, hey, we're doing like, I'll do an hour lesson for $100 or whatever. You know what I mean? And he just started paying these guys for lessons. And he literally has gotten so fucking good within like a year and a half. It's ridiculous. Damn. And it's like, dude, you you can literally hack the system. And also... Not only are those guys like, not only did he learn a lot from them because you're hands on with someone that knows what the fuck they're doing, but they're like his homies now, and he like has opened for them at shows and stuff. Because See, yeah. because then because then you're kicking it with them, you know what I mean? So like, I'm not yeah. that good at like reaching out to people and stuff, but I just buy these courses, and then it's like you get to learn everything, but then you also have access to people at the top of the industry because instead of trying to hit them up on Instagram in a sea of millions, you're talking to them on Facebook through like. 300 people yeah yeah so, so you have it's a, just you have a, it's a better chance of like getting to yeah it. and you also building in that community see okay courses though it's i feel like it's hard to find a course that's like genuinely like good Do you right know what I mean? and, and that's when you have to like trust the creator and like when colder like dropped his course and started marketing it i just knew because of the way the way his shit is so refined yeah i was like this he, course he is like has a fucking yeah yeah like his, in his, all of his socials and like his content in general is so meticulously refined. I was like, I know for a fact, Sam Colder's course is not going to be half-assed Yeah, yeah because this yeah. dude spends months making one video. Like I know it's going to be lit and it was, it was a fully comprehensive course Worth in it. premiere and after hundred percent, bro. Dude, I, okay. I tell people I would pay the $800 just for his keyboard commands. Are you straight fucking up, me? Straight up, because you get his keyboard commands, and dog, I literally edit 20 times faster now. I know every command. Oh, dude. Like, See, I do. Like, oh, I, I edit my vlogs in, like, 40 minutes. Are you serious? Are you fucking Yeah, bro. Me? Like, it's just straight up fingers. Yeah. Wow. Because, for like, me, bro, like, it takes me to edit. Because, I mean, obviously, I'm doing longer format. Right. But it's, like, some of these videos are fucking two hours long. No, right. But it legit takes me. Sometimes 12 hours to edit fucking one podcast. I'm not doing any yeah. transitions. I'm doing cuts. That's yeah, it, no, dude. I'm I, doing could, cuts I could edit one of your podcasts in 30 minutes. Probably Bullshit. not. I'd have to watch the whole episode. Bullshit. <laughs> I'd have to watch the whole episode. No, but yeah, dude, see, that's the thing. If anyone out go there, through. yeah, if there's videographers or editors watching this, learn literally every single fucking keyboard command that you possibly can in your software because you have to think about it like learning a language. Like I had all these creative ideas when I was like editing videos in the past but like you said like in in high school and even college like 
a vlog would take me weeks to make mm -hmm. because I'm doing everything with my mouse and I don't know shit about the software. I just know how to make cuts, but that like fucks up your ability to communicate because you're just jumping over all these hurdles. Like the second your fingers learn the language, then it's pure like creative expression. Cause I don't even have to think about how to use the software. It's just like mm. ripping through it. It's the same with like, my, so I don't know if you've seen any of the TikToks I've been making. But like I, I make some more like kind of like I, I balance it between just dumb shit and then I'll like produce a skit. Yeah. And like there's always comments like, oh, my God, like this probably took so long to make blah, blah, blah. And it's like funny because when I look at them, I'm like a year ago. Yeah. Like this video would have taken me a few hours to make. I edited this in 20 minutes. Yeah. Because it's just learn your keyboard commands, dude. It's the most boring <laughs> shit ever. But then it's literally making videos is so and much less like obnoxiously annoying and slow. Do you recommend using uh, Adobe Premiere over Final Cut for editing? I mean, not necessarily. I just never learned. So the reason I'm just in Premiere now is because I thought I'd like learn more After Effects. And I know some, and I also just did it because like, honestly, because the agency work, like the agency I worked with was all in Premiere. So I was constantly sharing project files with people. But like Got Final it. Cut rips too. I just never learned. I knew like two keyboard commands in Final Cut got it and okay. i know 65 okay. in premiere so like i, I think feel like there is more though there is more oh, in final in, no, fi in Adobe no, final, premiere. i think there is more but like final cut i i think honestly i could be faster in final cut because it runs smoother and it's yeah, like more yeah. simplified so like if i would have learned the commands i know now in final cut like i would like i'm honestly tempted eventually to like not switch back but i own it still because you yeah. own it for life and i i think i do want to learn how to just pump videos out in final cut eventually just to like mm -hmm. see how it feels, because like for content needs, it might be more convenient than Premiere. I don't yeah, know. I'm just yeah. in Premiere. I mean, I've gone I through both. Yeah, I've gone through both. See, like I I started off on Adobe because when I in high school I didn't have a Mac, right? So I had to use I had to use Adobe. Like I, that's the only platform that you could download. Right. Like that wasn't Other than like on Movie Mac. Maker. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck am I gonna do on Movie Maker? Yeah, I made my first um, YouTube videos in Movie Maker. Is trash. Hey, hey, iMovie on the phone though. Yeah. Doing like vi like shots on your phone and then going <laughs> on iMovie. Me and my friends would like go downtown, just yep. take phone videos, and then we'd sit at home together, yeah. all in like a circle, and like we're like thirty minutes. You have to make right. a video, and like you had thirty minutes to fucking hustle. make this cool little thing. Yeah, dude, editing um, on phones is so hard. Like even some TikToks, even if it's just a phone video, I'll just bring it into Premiere to edit it. Cause I'm like, yeah, dude, I just, yeah. I would rather import this onto my computer and edit it in a minute than I would like wanting to fuck around with this app. Yeah, exactly. But, 100%. And what, but people don't, people also don't know the app. People think a lot of people that make videos on their phone, they don't understand. They don't want to go through the time to understand right. the fucking computer stuff. Right. But it is easier. Like, yeah, 100%. it might take you a little bit more time to understand it, but I'm telling you in the long run, if you want to be a content creator, you have to use a fucking computer. Yeah, you have you to have good Wi-Fi, and you have to figure your shit out and learn it because right. it 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 makes it so much right. higher quality. It makes it so much easier in the long run. Right. Like it's just it's a it's a no brainer to learn. You have if to you're dude. trying to do, and yes, especially yes. I think the natural order of video editing because this was definitely the progression I took is like okay, you learn how to cut clips and move things around. So like, that's cool. And you're probably doing it with a blade tool and then dragging. Right. And then mm -hmm. once you learn that most people don't like for years after I learned just that I didn't learn any other functionality things. Cause then it's really? like, you want to just be creative and like learn how to make videos. So like, I'll figure yeah. out how to use titles or like, eventually I learned how to speed ramp, but like it, yeah, you kind of just say fuck it. Cause it's like, okay, now I know how to cut videos around so I can start making ideas and that is good. But if I could go back again, I would literally force myself to just take a month to learn every keyboard command from the very start mm. because like it just gets you out of your way. It saves you hours of time. And right. also if you're trying to go into it as a career, like once you're a freelancer, you're probably not, at least I don't think I'd ever do. You shouldn't charge per hour because then you're just in, you're incentivizing yourself to be less efficient pretty much yeah. to make more money. Yeah. And so when I learned these keyboard commands, like you make so much more money for your time because you're fast. Like senior year of college, I got hired to do a recap video and usually recap videos have a 24 hour turnaround. And so yeah. I filmed this, I filmed this event from like three to 7 PM or whatever. I got home and then I was editing that recap video until 6 AM the next morning. And then I sent it to them. And if I had to do that today, I 
promise you I would be done with the work before 9 p.m. It would, you're saying that because Dude. of shortcuts, yes. you would have cut down that much time. Dude, Bro, that's have, that's that is that is nine extra hours dude, that you're saying yes. that you did because of keyboard commands. Yes, and a part of it is like becoming less. Uh, like if you have to understand the client, it's I think when like a very beginner move is to be really caught up on what clips to use, but it ultimately doesn't really fucking matter as long as you're telling the story. So that's a big yeah. part of saving time. Like I worked a festival, uh, a music festival in like August, and my buddy who's a fire shooter but he's a slower editor he like kind of just gets attached to certain shots and wants to make sure he knows like all of his footage and i agree like if you're making a project ideally if you have the time you should storyboard watch well yes but also you should watch all of your footage and like Mm -hmm. really slow down and take selects but if you have a quick turnaround time like i was working the whole weekend i didn't want to be up until 4 a.m so i'm not watching my selects for that for that specific deliverable now, for okay. the video I made, like, a few months later for it, I went through all the footage, pulled the best clips, and was meticulous about it. But, like, if yeah. I have a quick turnaround time, I'm going to, like, be – I'm going to be depersonalized. And I'm going to edit – I've edited a lot of videos in under an hour. Really? Like, deliverable Just to get clients. it. Just to get it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's the difference between me making $500 for eight hours of my time and me making five – or, sorry, not $500 for eight hours of my time and making $500 literally in an hour. Yeah. Like I can do it before I like, I can, if I finish that deliverable, okay, I made 500 bucks today and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I can go to the gym and do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Yeah. So So how'd you get into, how'd you get into client stuff? Like, were you making videos on your own first to build your portfolio? Yeah. yeah. Or did you just like hit up a client and then you're like, Hey, like, so the the first thing that, well, the first thing that got me into like wanting to do it for clients is I made, I messed around with the cameras at camp. So we'd always have a camp videographer. Um, okay. And I made a few videos for like the sessions. And then going back to school, I was like getting decent with video because I'd made some stuff for camp. I made some skits for camp. And it was already okay. a hobby. At this point, I'm a junior in college. Okay. Um, okay. And I joined, it was called the Mike Curb Institute. It's like a music institute. I basically joined mm-hmm. that as like a really cheap student job and I would just make some videos for them. Um, And that was the first thing that got me kind of working with clients. And it was all like mostly for free or just like cheap because we'd have like Memphis rappers come in or bands perform. And -hmm. then I would just help film the video and edit it. And there wasn't really anyone else at my school. Like I knew how to edit like me at the time. And I wasn't that good. It just like no one else was really doing it. Um, And then that honestly just kind of spiraled. But the first dude I actually hit up and was like, yo, I want to make you a video was this kid gray below me. His name was DJ smooth. And he had a clothing line. And he was dropping hoodies and shit. And I just thought like it was cool that he was doing something. So I hit him up and I made a video for him. And that was like my first ever client. I think he, the first thing he literally just gave me a hoodie. Like I didn't ask for money. Um, And it's not like he was popping. It's like we were both like just had no fucking clue what we were doing. And so I was trying to just like hook it up and like collaborate with someone. Um, So he gave me a hoodie and that hoodie was like my first ever form of payment. And then uh, I did a couple different things for him. And then his friend, who is a uh, hairstylist in Memphis, DM'd me on IG and was like, yo, can you do a video for me? And this was the end of junior year. And I kind of smashed this video, honestly, like on accident. It's, I keep it in my portfolio mm-hmm. because I just kind of like accidentally lit the scene properly. And like the location yeah. she picked was good, but I picked a good spot in the location. So the okay. video turned out kind of lit. And I was like, okay, I made a lot of shitty videos after that. But mm-hmm, that video yeah. was lit, and I think she paid me 200 bucks. So that okay. was like, okay. And then from there, I've never been good about, like, I've just been so lazy about, like, networking and sales. I yeah. just literally would coast through senior year, and it was purely just Instagram hashtags and, like, people that, like, knew the people I'd worked for. So I would just, like, have random clients, kind Pretty of. But I, but I didn't put too much pressure on it because I was, like, writing papers and, like, being a student. Yeah. And I would, yeah. like, DJ formals to make some side cash that year, too. Okay. So that, like, I've honestly, I've literally, dude, I've been so, I'm trying now to not be lazy about the business because I've been lazy Mm -hmm. about it my whole life. And it's like good to an extent. You let your abilities like speak for themselves, but yeah, you're not going to get like higher paying jobs and you're not going to get your dream clients if you don't like go look for people. Yeah. Yeah. And right now I'm literally just riding this wave of like word of mouth. Like that was, that was what I was doing when I was working construction. I would just have people hit me up. Like, yo, you did this video for them. Will you do something for me? And I was like, sure, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And then 
literally wasn't grinding it at all. I just stopped working construction because I was like, I need like a month. That was when I got Color Creative. And then like a month later, dude that owns a creative agency was like, yo, you want a full-time job? We'll pay you $35,000 yeah. a year. And I was like, bet. Yeah. And, and is, it all remote? So- is it all remote? No, this was all, this was all full-time in Cincinnati. So I was oh, like okay. Okay. in the office with them four times a week. And it was cool working with a team and like going to shoots and stuff. But then like I started to have people hit me up again for work. And since I'd done professional work, like I went pro last year, I'd say, especially once I got okay. that job. Cause I was okay. working, I mean like in office, it was only 30 hours a week, but we had some 50 hour weeks. And I was like, I was one of two editors, but our other editor like handled a lot of the photography shoots and stuff they were doing. So I was doing most of our edits and I was also okay. filming a lot of things. So okay. it was just like pure output. But then it started to get to the point where it's like, all right, I'm making 35 K a year and I'm literally busting my ass and yeah, like, like so many hours, so many hours. And ultimately I never wanted to like the whole goal with this from the very start was to be my own boss. Yeah. So once I started having people hit me up again at like the end of the summer and I knew I was moving to Chicago, I was like, I need to dip on this so that I can get my own checks because like you make a lot more money when a client's paying you versus when a boss is paying you who also has eight other people to feed yeah. and he has to pay yeah. for his rent and he has to cover all of like, the credit card bills for all the gear and like they were growing like crazy. So there's just so much overhead and like we had like a team of eight. So it's like, dude, if, if this was a team of three, I would be making like a hundred K a year right now with what I'm doing. But like, we don't have the money yet. So I'm not making much. And like he offered me a raise and stuff and it was like a good working relationship, but I fucked off. And now they still hit me up for a lot of work and I make way more money now. Cause I'm and they pay, they pay you more for like just personal. like Yeah. So, I mean, if you like really want to get into numbers and it's still not like, they still take a good chunk just to be mm-hmm. clear. Um, yeah. Because they have me in some non-competes and like, if they're hiring me for something, it's their client. Yeah. But like this past month I had one of their clients hit me up and ask me to do like 14 videos for them. He offered me a ten thousand dollar budget. He's like, I need all this shit, and it was all remote edits, so no expenses oh, at fuck, all. Yeah. So if that was my client, I would have bagged ten grand this month. But it wasn't my client. It was Ruben's <laughs> yeah. client. And I was already in the non compete, and I only had them hit me up because I did work with them in the past. It was MLS, Major League Soccer. So oh, okay. I only had them hit me up because Rudin had bring me brought me in to do some work with MLS. Before. Right. Before. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So the project had to go through them. Um, and we we pretty much cut it 50-50, which okay. hurt, but it only hurt because I knew what the number could have been if it was my client. Yeah. But yeah, like if you still compare it, this month I made 14 videos. Each video, except for like one or two of them, took me like about an hour. It was just okay. like they just had their playoffs. So I was doing, they would send me all their broadcast clips and B-roll of the teams. And I would make a hype edit of like these two teams are playing. These two teams Got are it. playing. Now these two teams are playing and these two teams are playing. So I just did a video for every playoff match, basically. Okay. Okay. But money wise, I still made, I mean, after tax, probably like $4,400. And that is for how much time of, for how much time of work? I was probably working three hours a week for them. Yeah. For how, how many weeks, like five weeks, three weeks. Yeah. I I made double my salary and I worked probably 300 less hours. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. So, like when you, when you took, but you took hours and hours of practicing, getting right. really good, being able to get to that point where you're right. and I hustled doing for it for them for that age. So yeah. trust me, like they know I'm valuable yeah. to them because I busted exactly. my ass when I was full time with them. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so you got to start low, dude. You exactly. got to start low, climb start the ladder. Low. But like, if you, if you're practicing and you're going and doing it and right. over and over again, you'll get better. You'll right. Get to that point. You got to start low and you got to put in that grind, but then you also have to be willing to like bet on yourself because when I was moving to Chicago, they were willing to keep me full time and like have me find things here. And he was going to offer me a raise and stuff. But like, if I hadn't just like left, cause I was like, nah, I'm like going to do dope shit. I'll be fine. Like I know like the clients are going to come. If I hadn't left, I'd be making less money working more than I am right now. Purely cause I was like, nah, I'm going to do it. It's going to be fine. And like, it was a risk, but it also, and that's where you really need to figure out what your values are. Cause it was a risk. But I, my whole life, have been so dead set on no one being able to tell me what I can do with my time that it, like, mm. wasn't a risk. I was just talking to my friend over Thanksgiving who, like, he likes his job, but he kind of wants to leave and become self-employed. He's like, yeah, I do. I just, like, respect it because it's, like, scary to, like, 
go out on your own. And I was like, it is scary. Now, granted, this is coming from like a place of privilege because I'm, my parents cover my health insurance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like I graduated yeah. college debt free. So like I have padding that like some people don't, but I am like financially covering my life right now. But it's not scary because there's no option. Like I'm not going to have a boss. Yeah. So it's like you don't you don't risk manage and think about what might go wrong when you're like this is this is what my life's going to be. I'm going to yeah. be this. It doesn't matter like nothing like there's no other choice. So what's there to be afraid of? Like this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just make sure to like bet on yourself cuz that's like yeah, you got to hustle for people. You got to grind and like put your head down and take not a lot of I've done plenty of free work too. Like mm-hmm. and I I really grinded for that company some weeks. Like I was I would pump out like four videos a week for, of like big yeah. projects just going insane and like working at home, working late hours. But like, you gotta yeah. like, you gotta stretch yourself and figure out how to do that and then mm-hmm. be like, all right, peace. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Build your skills, my own dip shit out. out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And but now, a lot of people get stuck in that though. Yeah. A man. lot of people get stuck where they're like, oh, like, oh, I can just work for this company. I don't have to do all this extra work. It's exactly. not that much more work. Nah. You already put the work in. Fucking yeah. go do your own yeah, shit. Go do like, your own shit. Like, build yourself. You, you just know? have to learn. And I, someone put it really well because it is the hardest part is self governing, like having the discipline when you're on your own and no one's yeah. telling you shit. But I watched the video. I think the dude's name was Heinz on YouTube, but he put it so clearly where he was like, I know Heinz. Yeah. 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 yeah he's dope. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like long dread. Yeah, yeah, he was he yeah, was saying yeah, uh, yeah. He, the way he worded it, he was like, "The reason it's hard to self govern is because like you don't respect yourself like you respect other people." So it's like you don't wake up and like work hard for yourself because you don't take what you say seriously the same way you take what your boss would say seriously. Damn, and it was so clean and like articulate. Damn, and I was like, that's yeah, bro. deep, bro. Because like it's that's like, some deep dude, shit. It's, it's facts for student athletes because like it's hard when you when you stop playing sports to like stay on your shit because it's like if a coach tells me to run, I'll run. But if I tell myself yeah. to run, I'll bitch out because I don't want to run. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't exactly. take yourself bro, seriously. Straight up, yeah. straight up. Oh, dude. So that that, that, I mean, that was so clean the way he said it. I was like, damn, bro. Dude's dude's pretty uh, smart sometimes. He no, he is very articulate with his thoughts. That's a that's a very if you do like content like that Ethan creates and like vulnerable vulnerability and like someone that talks like this, Heinz, fire. Yeah, he's cool. Go check him out. He's fucking cool. great guy. I want to interview him to be honest. Yeah, that'd be lit. I think that would be a very cool interview. So maybe in the future. But that 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 point hits really so hard, hard bro. And and you you mention it with the student athlete thing. I can I can attest to that because like me and you both play college across. Yeah. Like we both understand that it's a fucking job, but you're getting right. pushed not only by yourself because you're like, but you have an entire team that relies on you. You have right. a coach. You have all these people that are relying on you that you can't you can't not do it. You have right. to. You signed up for it. You got to do it. And the second you get out, bro, I I stopped working out for months. Yeah, bro, it's so easy to fall out of it. Nah, and then even when you do, even when you do work out, like you don't go that hard because you're alone. Like it's easy to bust your ass when forty other people are doing it with you, because you're like, well, it's normal. But it's like it's not normal if you're alone. Yeah. But if you figure out how to push yourself like that when you're alone, it the confidence boost is like wicked. You're set. Because you're like, I did this because I told myself I was gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's like what you uh, need. Trust. That's what you need to like go pro in anything. That's like yeah. what becoming yeah, an adult is. I'm convinced is like taking <laughs> yourself seriously. Be like, yeah. I'm waking up at 7:20. I'm waking up at 7:20. Yeah, because like yeah. If someone else like told doing me doing what had you to, say. Yeah, doing what you doing what you say. Like telling yourself something and doing what you said. Right. Like key, Not fucking to. key. Keeping your word is you could you keep your word for all these other people. Yeah. But bro keep your word for yourself yeah like i know i know that like see like with this breakup i kept telling myself i need to do this i need to do this like this is something that i I just feel like is needed right now for myself and then i kind of jumped back into it and like we we did this back and forth thing for a little bit and but in the back of my head i'm like no like i need to do this for myself right like i told myself i was gonna do this I'm sticking to my word. I'm not going to go back on it because I feel like shit. Yeah. Like, and I feel sad. Okay. Go through the fucking sadness. I'm willing right. to go through it now. And like, while it still hurts sometimes, like, I'm like, no, you know, this is the right thing I'm doing right now. Right. Because I read something the other day and it was, it, it recently shit on social media has just been hitting real hard for me. Yeah. Um, but it was like, 
uh, growth feels like loss. 100%. And I was like, damn, dude. Like, that's so fucking true. Yeah. Like, I know that me doing this, I'm going to, my business and, and me as a person is going to grow so much. Right. But it fucking feels like loss. Yeah. Like, I feel like I lost something that I wanted to have forever, you 100%. know? 100%. So. That's the, that's the same thing know. that, that's exactly how it went down for me. I don't know if it was, like, too emotional for you when you dropped out of college and quit lax. But for me, at least, because I did two full years with the team. And, like, I did the full third year until the season started because my shoulder was starting to hurt again. And like, I was saying no to some video jobs, but like more than anything, I had that voice that was like, dude, I need to quit lacrosse. Yeah. And it wasn't because like, not like when I quit, I was like totally on my shit and like grinding a video business. And it wasn't because like I hated the sport anymore. I think it was just like, I needed to f- start to figure out how I was going to make this happen after college. And I was still like, my output was like pretty minor junior and senior year with video, but it was like, it, and it's like, okay, I feel like I'm betraying like some of my best friends, like two of my best friends were captains that year. And like, it was their senior year and like fucking off just like felt shitty. Cause it's like, all right, I'm leaving the tribe. Yeah. I'm just saying like peace. Yeah. But like my, my brain was like, dude, I need to quit lacrosse. So then I quit lacrosse and I like literally shit you not i cried like a baby in my coach's office for like an hour when i was quitting because Mm -hmm. it was yeah it's like it was literally a breakup with like this girl i had spent 14 years of my life with because i've been playing since third grade and it just and i like liked it that was the hard thing it's like i like the team i like going to practice i like all this shit but it's not serving me anymore and my shot is Mm. no longer 95 miles per hour and i'm fucking just shooting ducks into the goalie stick and it's not fun anymore my yeah. shoulder hurts, so I'm out. No, I'm playing. Yeah, but. yeah, dude. No, I, I that that feeling when like you give up on something because you know you know in your heart that it's the better decision. Yeah, because you got to find like, something new. Yeah, dude, you got to start all over. Because right. I mean, we we are very similar in a lot of aspects, especially talking to you now on this like deeper level. Like, you know, we both were college athletes. We both played the same college sport. Yeah. And we actually played, like, our teams played against yeah, each we other. Played, you like, played in the one same more division. year, I would have played you. In yeah, the same dude. division, like, same, like, small liberal arts school. Yeah, You exactly. definitely, you like, played dude. against, like, all my homies. All my homies were still oh, 100%. playing Oh, 100%. Time. 100%. Yeah, so, I played Rhodes. Like, we all, yeah. we, I'm, if I remember correctly, we actually lost to them the year that I played them. Um, Hopefully. So, fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. We definitely, but, I definitely beat you guys twice. Yeah, yeah. But I think you it's guys okay, got though. us one year, right? We got it. We got you guys one year. Yeah. One year. But Snuck like, us. Yeah. So yeah, we did. Bastards. But um, <laughs> the the fact of like letting go of that that thing that you've been so comfortable doing for most of your life, especially starting that young. Yeah. Like it's ingrained in you. Yeah. Like, it's your being life. a lacrosse player is me. Like I yeah. am a, I will forever be a lacrosse player. So many hours, yeah. dude. You know, like hours and hours, bro. The amount of hours that I would be like fucking lifting, carrying shit. And then like yeah. going and doing a three hour practice right afterwards. Yeah. Or like even coming to practice two hours early. So I could practice yeah, my shot. And that's or, like spring fucking, Hours at tournaments, you know, like yeah. going to fucking all summer, like, I traveled on travel all, teams. Yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. Like I traveled all around the country. I was fucking at doing this college yeah. visit and this college visit by myself. And I was doing like a trip where I was gone for fucking two weeks, just yeah. literally going to colleges Seeing around places, the country. Right. Like, bro, I mean, the amount of time that went into that. And then the fact that I was like, no, I'm I like my brain is just saying, nope, it's done. Right. You're done. It's done. And and I'm trying to fight it for a little bit. And I'm like, no, dude, like, this is just, this isn't it anymore. Like, right. I, and I had that same realization where I'm like, fuck, I need to go and find myself and right. do my shit that is actually going to benefit me. Now, lacrosse is that one sport that, like, I wish you could make money off of doing. Yeah. Because if you could, if you could be a professional lacrosse player, right. I would be practicing practicing every single day for the rest of my life. Yeah. But you can't. There's no like real There's like a few guys. Yeah, but they have brand deals they and have they brand have like deals. You know, they all have their shit. own brands. They have social yeah. content. Like it's so much more than just playing. Yeah, it's not just playing. It's like the whole fucking nine yards. Yeah. But then you have like football, you know, right. where you genuinely can make 
a fucking good ass living if you really put the work in and get good right you know so but like lacrosse is that one sport you can't do that like you literally have you have to quit yeah it ends. you have to quit it's the one job where there's an end like there is there's no matter what there's an end yeah you know and unless you play like like travel ball like later on because i'm i do like some like pickup games and shit but it's not the same no it's not the same when you like let go of that job that you had in lacrosse and now you're like you know so it's just a hobby um, yeah it's yeah, it's just it's, like a trip. It's a hobby. The trip, yeah. Those it are just is, like dude. those are just those hard calls that you just have to make sometimes. Yeah, because that's like what it means to develop as a person, like carve out your shit. Mm-hmm. Like you got to control yeah. your life. That, I think that was the biggest thing. It's just like controlling your life. Because like I could have just bitched out and played for two more years and fucked my shoulder up more and like wanted to like not upset anyone. But it's like I you have to decide what your life is at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And the coach, and that's the thing, like the team, whether you know it or not, has complete control over you. Yeah. Especially in college. I mean, I know that you know the fucking regimen, but for yeah, people Yeah, college that is nonstop, bro. Dude, that's nonstop. I mean, I was waking up at fucking 5.30 to go to a, a 6 a.m. wall ball practice. Yeah. And then going and lifting after my cl- – and then going to breakfast with my team, yep. going to my classes, coming home, getting a little bit of homework done, and then going to an hour and a half lift, yep. and then a three-hour practice right afterwards. And yep. that was every single day. And if those days were not going on, then we're fucking traveling on a bus or a plane yep. to go play another fucking team. Bro, the travel is the biggest thing Every single day. Travel yeah. is the biggest yeah. I, time I love consumer. that, though. Oh, it's, dude, yeah. it's so fun. That was the thing. Like, I literally loved my coach, too. Like, I had so much fun doing it. Yeah. It's just like, I just was losing like, yeah. Like once you, you can tell, you know what I could really tell it was like sophomore year or no, it was, yeah, it was the year that I had been injured. Um, okay. but we were starting to make some playoff runs like by my sophomore year. Um, and I was sitting there in a game and it was like the first round of the playoffs. And I was like starting at this point and like, I was like kind of down still from the injury. I, I wasn't as good as I was freshman year. But I was sitting there mm-hmm. playing this game, and this was a team we were playing Huntington, and we usually fucking would just wipe Huntington. Yeah, and we yeah. almost lost to them. And I was literally on the field, and this is like kind of embarrassing to say because I used to like be real fucking competitive. Yeah, I, I was always like chill. I never like was super like metal about it, but I would like go hard, you know, until the end of the yeah. game. But I was sitting there on the field. We were, were about to maybe lose to Huntington, and this is like playoffs, so school's already out. Everyone's gone home. I'm yeah. like waiting to just go home to go to summer camp. I was on the field hoping we might lose. I was like, bro, like if they just stick a stupid goal, I can fucking go home tomorrow. And then I was like, I, that was just like the first red flag for me. I was like, dude, I really don't give a shit about the playoffs. And that's like yeah. when you should give a shit. I was like, I want to get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, that, that's when you should be giving. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. So then like when the next year, like I went through with the fall season and like all the training and stuff. Shoulder just started to hurt again. And I, I could just tell because I quit like a week before our first game junior year. I could just tell like I was not in it. And I was like, it's really just like not fair to anyone here if I'm not going to be busting my ass. And I know I wasn't busting my ass because like the injury, I lost 20 pounds from it or like 15 pounds. So like, but I didn't work to get it back in the yeah. off season. Yeah. So I yeah. came back, like I, I came back 170 pounds playing mentally like i still weighed 190 and mm-hmm. it's like okay my dodges aren't getting through people my shots are all getting saved now and they didn't used to be and like i don't even give a fuck yeah because i didn't like put in the work to like get back to what i was because i just made videos in the off season yeah. and like yeah. fucked around and like tried to do art and then it's like oh shit lacrosse is playing again so yeah. see that's the thing like artists art you can't it's really, really hard to be an athlete and an artist at the same time. Yeah. It, dude, really it is. fucking hard. Because they, like, don't because compute. No, they don't. Like, it, see, that that's the thing. What I, what I started realizing is I'm like, fuck, I want to have – I want to create content of, like, sports and athletes and, and right. extreme sports. But if I'm creating the content, I can't be playing. the one that's in front of the camera. I'm not playing. Yeah, I'm the one creating the content. Like, there's this complete split. Yeah. And – that's where I've I saw the difficulty in it. It's like I want to create art, but and I also want to like create content and all this stuff. But if I'm doing this, I can't. Like I right. literally, like, I I don't have the time. I don't. I can't. Like I can't. 
I can't create a fucking video for the lacrosse yeah, team because 100%. I'm on the field. You know, 100%. I'm not. I can't hold a camera while I'm also playing. Yeah, it just doesn't work. So doesn't work. And also, it, like, it's just God bless athletes, but like most lax bros and really any full time at like most of them don't give a fuck about art. So you no. kind of just feel like you can't like you don't have any homies because your homies are usually your teammates because you guys spend all your time together. But then none yeah, of your exactly. homies have your interests. Yeah. Because your interest is lax. <laughs> yeah. And so then you're just like alone wanting to make videos or like do something, but you don't even have anyone to like bounce inspiration off of or talk to about Straight it. Straight up. Because yeah. you're just like you an athlete. You have to find those people. You yeah. To find and you only find people. them when you like fuck oh, off and do some dude. other shit. I did yeah. the year that I quit and like all that. I did film our team's conference championship. So that was cool. Oh, made that's a, cool. Made a little video and they played Barry because I was just like, if uh, I quit yeah. to do video and like, people think I quit to do video. I like better at least have the balls to like, go make the team a video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like I better like Straight at least up. be doing this shit actually. So yeah, that was cool. And like, yeah. they were, they were, they were stoked on it. And like, if I ever okay. end up back in Memphis, I would love to make them like a way sicker video. Cause I'm better now, but yeah. Yeah. The love will always be there, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta leave it at some point, figure shit out. You do, you do, you do. I'm definitely going to go back and visit my team, but I don't know, dude, there's that, I got with with my with my uh, team. There are people. I I felt like there was a lot of resentment that was held yeah. because I was one of the better players. Right. I was a fucking key player, and I like I really did make that team like link in a way. Right. Like with our, I was always the one like where, where like the freshman came in my sophomore year. Right. I was the one that was like a fucking dick. I was yeah. not not a dick in like a bad way, right. but I was the one where I'm like come here motherfucker right. like i'm the best defensive midi on this team you're right. coming against me right now right. and i don't give a fuck i'm gonna put you on the ground in practice yeah like i was that player and then all of a sudden i'm like no i'm i'm out like i'm yeah, going I'm back quitting. to california yeah. and like it makes it more i called awkward, my bro. team and i i literally i and I, the fa the bad thing was is i didn't do it in person like yeah. i i was back in california when the shit clicked where I'm like, no, you know what? I probably shouldn't be doing this right now. Right. And so I called my coach and I'm like, well, I'm not going to come back after December break to fucking, right. you know, pay for another semester while I'm here. Cause right. I, you know, I know <laughs> that I should be back here right now. Right. So I, should call, I had to call him up and I know that he was like, he was livid. Cause yeah. I had just gotten the fucking, I got in second team all conference for right. defensive midi, one of two positions. And right. like, he's expecting me to fucking do that the next year and get first team, you know? Right. And I'm like, Sorry. yeah, that, like, I, I, that I, makes I, I just tougher can't. Too. Yeah. Like when you're not, you know? cause I definitely had, I had the, it was lucky that a, I got to do it with my coach in person, but then also like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like go into the locker room and like say it to the team. But I was around all those guys and like I still got yeah. to do the video and shit. So like I feel like I was able to like avoid most of the resentment outside of maybe a little bit from some of my closest friends. Like yeah. people were pretty understanding, but it's easier because I was around. So like, yeah, exactly. I feel like with what happened with you, it'd be easier to dehumanize you because you just fucking disappeared. I just disappeared. I yeah, was just then they're like, oh, and I fuck even came back kid. and visited. Right. I even came back and visited. And, you know, some of them were like, yo, like, let's, you know, let's party. Right. But at the same time, they're like. You could tell that there the pe there were some people that were like, "Damn, bro, like we missed you. Like yeah. you should be back here right now." And 100%. like they they're holding that thing where they're like, "Bro, like why'd you leave? Right? Like what what made you want to?" And I'm like, I fucking to tell them in person now, fucking a year later, where I'm like just coming out to visit to say hello and like because I miss right. you guys, and it's just like fuck, dude. I right. I I feel bad, but at the same time, I need to choose myself. Yeah, hundred like, percent. You know, I can't choose the team every single time nah. uh, instead of myself. So yeah crazy shit but uh, it's i i just thought that's fucking crazy that we played it that we our teams played against each other and yeah. we were both college athletes and that we were able to link like this I yeah just, right. i love that no for sure but, um very similar i have a couple more questions i have a couple more questions Hit me. That i got a little more time more. okay bet bet um so the these kind of pertain more to passion okay um and so i i the i always ask these questions at the end of the podcast yeah for um sure. Just to kind of keep like a, you know, consistent, like I have the same couple questions, right. but, um, what's your definition of passion? Uh, I think, uh, passion is something that you feel like you have to do even when it's like not fun. Yeah. Cause like yeah. hobbies are fun. Like every time I like skateboard and I'm like, not that I don't do it that much, but like, that's always fun. You know what I mean? Or like, yeah. Yeah. Even like lacrosse for the most part, when I played, it was 
it was always fun because there's never that like internal battle. If I like go like all my hobbies are just like a good time. I DJed for a while and that was just like fun. They're all yeah. things I never like judged myself in, but like with video and art, I think I can tell it's a passion because it's like a battle. It's yeah. not just like a good time. It's I'm doing it. It's like it's like I'm almost borderline torturing myself sometimes because I do it to feel good, but then it like makes me feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> but then I still have to do it. Like it's like my life force. If I don't do it, I'm fucked. Yeah. But still when yeah. I do it, it like sucks sometimes. Oh yeah. But there's like oh, no yeah. choice. Dude, trust me, there's times fuck yeah, I feel that shit cuz I there are times where I'm doing this podcast and I'm up at like fucking 5 in the morning cuz I started editing at 9 cuz I didn't have yeah. time cuz I had fucking work. You just wait till you learn your keyboard night. commands. Oh my god, I'm so fucking hyped, bro. Once that, you learn your I, keyboard I, I just, commands, bro, you'll be in bed by midnight. Oh, bet. Okay. Bet. Say less. I'm, I'll learn that shit for yeah. sure. But yeah, you make a good point. Like it is torture sometimes. Yeah. And you have to be willing to go through the torture. If yeah. it's not worth it enough for you, you won't do it. Right. You won't torture yourself like that. And you have to be, there are, you will find something. If you are actually looking for something. Yeah. If you are genuinely taking time to like try new things. Yep. Yeah. And and try different things that you like have an idea that you want to do. Okay, fucking try it. Right. You if you find something that tortures you, but you still do it every single day, yeah. and like, and and then there's like something that's just fulfilling inside of you because you're doing it. Right. That's your passion. There's a dude on TikTok 100%. that, and I hate myself. I don't know his name because he's one of my favorite TikTokers. I'll try to find one of his videos and send him to you. Okay. But sweet. he put it like perfectly when it came to creating things. He was like, the only way you're gonna be able to like be passionate about something is if the like the adrenaline rush and the the pleasure and happiness that comes from making something has to outweigh all of the pain and annoyance and self doubt and like shittiness of making it at the same time. So it's a, yeah. you, if you can get through all that and it's like worth it from a cost like whatever cost benefit. Like in, I mean, yeah, I, don't know, I just stumbled, but yeah. He just yeah. like he just worded it perfectly. It's like it's gonna suck sometimes. Like this shit isn't just fun, mm -hmm. but it's like you have to like want to do it. It has to be like a part of who you are. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Straight up. Smash. It. Um, okay, and then I got I got some. I'm. I really want you to send me that video because I would like to see it. Yeah, but, I gotta um, find him. You'll fuck with him. Okay, bet. Send him over to me. Um, I have a couple. I have one more question, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. But cool. what would you say? to someone that is trying like you kind of mentioned it right there but what's one thing you would share with someone that's trying to follow their passion doesn't mean video editing doesn't mean like a podcast just whatever passion anything. they're trying to do anything right what's one thing you would share with someone that's trying to pursue their passion or follow their passion might be having difficulty with it or might be having difficulty like finding that for them right so if you're having difficulty i guess it's kind of two it's two different things if you're having difficulty following it Shit, give me a second. I just had the thought and I kind of lost it. Say the question one more time so my brain can move again. Okay, I'll I'll split them into two questions okay. and I'll I'll just cut this shit out. So if you were to share one thing with someone that's trying to follow their passion, what what would you share with them that are like they already have their right. passion? What's something that right. you would keep them on their track? Right. I think I kind of answered this in the uh, the questionnaire a little bit too, but you have to be willing to like feel like a dumb, embarrassed, idiot baby. That's it. Because, dude, like, when you start shit, you feel like such a loser. Like, if, yeah. you, if you're like, damn, I want to learn guitar, and you watch all these insane guitarists, you pick up that guitar, you're going to feel like a fucking loser because you yeah. suck. And it's the same way with, like, oh, I want to edit videos. Yeah, well, that first video is going to fucking blow. And, like, yeah. no one's going to care about it. And while you're making it, you're going to feel dumb. And you're gonna yep. feel stupid and it's gonna take you forever and then when it, you're done with it it's literally not gonna be good and you're gonna be like yeah. i hate myself why am i doing this so like <laughs> and then you do it again <laughs> yeah you have to you have to like just be totally fine and this is actually another thing i always think about with student athletes especially people that have played since kids i think it's especially hard for people like i started playing lacrosse at, at in third grade so it's really easy when you get like when you're young, you don't judge yourself like that. You just do things yeah. that are fun. And so you don't get in your way. But then it's like, okay, you get good at something before you even have the level of self-awareness to be embarrassed. You do yeah. that your whole life. You're sick at it. And then you stop. Then you try to get good at something else. And you're fucking trash. 
And you're like, yep. and you're like, what mm. the fuck? I've been good at shit my whole life. Why am I not good at this? And then it's like, you feel entitled to be good at it because you were like a natural at lacrosse in third grade and played yeah, for when you're fucking, so fucking malleable. And yeah. Like, and like so played like for 14 years. Shit. It's like, if you're like 17 or like high school and up, dude, like you're thinking about what people think about you. And if you want to make music and you're too like worried about it blowing, like you're not going to be fucking flume day one. I just yeah. think it's like, just like, it's all good to like literally blow at something. Because you're only going to be in that place. Honestly, it only takes like six months to get competent at something. Yeah. Mastering something's a different story. But like you only have to like fumble through it as long as you're efficient. You only have to fumble through something for like a year or less until people are at least like when my videos were still trash, they were still way better than someone that couldn't make videos because I put in a decent amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you can even put in, I mean, like if you're like out there playing video games and you have 60 to 80 hours logged on red dead redemption which i do um if you if you if you just log 50 hours into any skill if you put 50 hours into guitar like 50 focused hours in guitar music production graphic design drawing anything you'll be at least to the point after 50 hours where like other people might be like oh that's kind of cool yeah so just like get through like that phase of you just have to let yourself literally blow at whatever you're doing mm -hmm. you have to let yourself yeah. suck and like it's all okay. good you're gonna be a big dumb idiot baby that's fine you know what i mean yeah, that's sure. just weird that's just I weird i love is. that i love that that has by far been my favorite answer to that question throughout these entire i've had 29 interviews with yeah. people and i've never that fucking answer was beautiful i good, love that good i love that best one best get, one i'm definitely fucking wrecked that other guests <laughs> hey no shade no, to the I'm, other I'm, guests I'm but playing, this I'm one playing. was fucking good this one i'm just kidding i just like the way you put it like you made it as like a joke right um which like kind of takes off like you're still serious about the shit, but you right. still make it like, you know, like light and shit, which it's is just dope. some it's shit. You're like learning. Experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the other big thing, dude, it's like, cause I have friends that like, can't decide what direction they want to go in. You have to learn how to do that in the first place. Like I like learned how to like DJ a little bit. I learned how to kind of produce music. I've learned how to like, yo, yo, I've learned how to do a lot of dumb shit where I sucked, but it's like, once you learn that, like I could learn anything now. Yeah, because I just know what you have to go through, and it like you have to just suck, and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Like, you're only gonna suck yeah. for a little bit. Once you, and it's that's the where same it's thing like, with everything, though. It's yeah. the same thing with everything. With everything, like and it doesn't why, matter. Yeah. what it is, it's, it's the same process, right? And that's why if you're out there it's like the trying to decide game. what you should do, it yeah. fucking doesn't not matter. If, especially if you're like 18, just pick one thing and figure that shit out. And then if you don't like it. The next thing you pick, you'll already be better at learning things because you went through the first thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like just pick literally anything. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. There's no like See, consequence to starting something. I feel like that's hard to understand for a lot of people because we've been told what to learn. We've been told right. this is exactly what you need to learn in school. You're going right. to learn math. You're going to learn English. You're going to – you have this schedule. This is what you're going to learn and this is what's going to help you grow. Right. And then they don't have this individuality thing where they're like, oh, like I want to go – I want to go learn this. They're like, oh, well, that's not important because it's not learned. It's not taught in yeah, school. Yeah, no. So I'm not going to go do that because, you know, it's probably not going to make me this much money or like I'm probably not going to be stable or comfortable because – I, I have to teach it myself. Right. Like, learn to be your greatest teacher. Yeah. Like, hands 100%. down. I fucking taught myself all video editing by just going on fucking YouTube. For 100%. Hours and hours and watching different transitions and fucking. And I'm still not that good, but yeah. I've gotten much better than where I was at before. Right. You and know? it's only like, and like, also, be your own teacher. Nothing is teacher. too dumb to learn either. Like, yes. I think that, that yes. was the biggest thing I learned. And it was like largely just because my parents, like, didn't judge me and they let me do shit. But, like, I would get really obsessed with things at a young age and they would never be like, that's not productive. And I feel like that's where people have to unwire that in their brain. But like, I yeah, remember I got, I got grounded for like a month and I got obsessed with magic tricks. I like learned magic tricks. And then like, I fucking was doing some other shit. So I learned how to yo-yo, but I like took those things seriously because I was teaching myself. And like, I literally think like yo-yoing and hacky sacking and like magic and all this stupid shit I did as a kid. That's like why I, like I'm a self starter today and like learned video. Yeah. It's just because yeah. like no one was like, that's too dumb. You shouldn't do that. Like if you have an inkling about some shit, just like dive into it and just yeah. see what happens.
Yeah. 100%. No matter how, I don't care if it's like crow crocheting, like it doesn't matter. Like just try out hobbies and you'll learn how to like learn things. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I saw this quote. It's like when you're young, um, wait, when you're in your twenties to like thirties, you think that everybody is thinking about what you're doing. Right. When you're like, f- like 50 to 60, you start realizing, Oh, like people might not think eh, like people might not be paying attention to me as much as I thought. And then when you're like 60 to 80, you really understand, bro, no, no one gave cares, a fuck bro. this entire time. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. And that's the thing. Like, unless you become an expert at what you're doing and you're teaching other people on your craft and people see you as an inspiration. Right. Okay. That's when people start to care. Right. But you have to put the work in where people do not care. Right. To get to that point where people care. Right. It's just bottom line. Like you got to put the fucking work in. 100%. You got to put the work, you got to put the time and you have to be willing to fucking drop that ego and just say, fuck you to yeah. yourself and just do it. hundred you know? percent. And like, t- and like, take yeah. your, take your interest seriously. Like even if it's something mm-hmm. small, just like never, I just don't think you should ever tell yourself that you like, can't do something like this is a yeah. stupid example. Cause I'm doing it right now, but like sophomore year of high school, my friend learned how to like flip the pen. Right. Yeah. Dog, I could not flip my fucking pen for two years and I would sit in class and I would dude, I would break a sweat <laughs> cause I was like holding the pen and I was like trying and it wouldn't fucking flip, dude. I did not stop until I learned how to flip the fucking pen. <laughs> and then I learned a second flip and this is like, Nope, I fucked it. This is the most lit flip in the game right here. This is all I do. I'm in the pocket. There you go. This is like two and a half years of pure grind right here. Yep. <laughs> and I had, I had friends that learned it in like a week, dog. And I was like, I'm learning how to flip my fucking <laughs> pen because I respect myself. Fuck yeah. You said, you said you're going to do it and you fucking did it. Yeah, fucking you did didn't it. give up. That's, you fucking did it. I love Nothing that. is that's too dumb hilarious. to take seriously. Not even flipping a fucking no. pen. Okay? But also like it's no. not serious. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly yep. ethan i really appreciate you taking the time appreciate you uh, too, this bro. has been a great interview um i'm really glad we definitely should stay connected um, 100 bro i'm gonna be we'll traveling be around so if i'm ever in chicago hit i'll let up, you know man. hit me up if you're ever in la or wherever i'm at at the moment because i'm gonna be moving january 31st cool and going to rio dos new mexico sick then texas Sick. And then hopefully by that time I'll have my van and I'm just going to be going around and doing like interviews on Fire. the go throughout the country. So Fire, bro. Yeah, thanks do, for like, having me person. on, dude. It was a ton of fun of and I really fuck with what you're doing here. I think, yeah, I really respect just the hustle and I think it's dope. This is just dope because, and it's a good thing for any like younger creative or, or someone that's just newer is like you're connecting with people and making like genuine human connection beyond like commenting fire emojis on their Instagram page. <laughs> But like, that's like, yeah. dude, that's like, that's eternal because now like even, even me, like I'm, when I'm 40 years old, I'll be like, oh, fucking Blake was cool. Cause I actually feel like I know you now. You're not just like some Instagram yeah. handle. So like you're cutting yeah, through exactly. the noise in that sense. And I think that's going to, that's going to pay off long run for you. Cause you're like, thank you. bro. You're trying to fucking help people and you're trying to like really learn about shit. Yeah. And that's huge. I appreciate that. I appreciate course, that. Man. Really. I really do. I really do. And it's, it's really cool hearing other people's perspectives i think it's important because for the longest time like i've always been someone that loves having deep conversations yeah like like having a serious comment like not this fucking surface level stupid shit right um how many likes did you get on your phone no fuck that stuff yeah. i want to hear about like Proper your like the up. shit the shit that you've been through i yeah. want to hear about the fucking that pain yeah. you know i want to feel i want to Cause then I understand you more. And like, I've, right. I've always been someone that tries to connect with people. Right. This has been a blessing to me. Cause like, I, I love building other people up and like talking to people about real shit. Yep. And it's not only helping other people, but I, you know, it's helping myself. Too. Like, I genuinely have like a self, not as like selfish, but it is selfish in a way of like this. I, it does benefit me. I, I, I love having these conversations right. cause I'm learning. Like I'm pretty much picking my own teachers. Yeah, man, so. you're, you're picking your own teachers, you're learning shit. And like I said, at the end of the day, like you're, it's, it's making a legit connection that sticks in people's minds. Like I know for a fact, everyone you've interviewed, like you have a human connection with them. It's not just like you guys follow each other. Cause you sat down and talked for two hours about real shit. So yeah, yeah. Just keep doing your thing, bro. I will keep on pushing. Who knows sure. what's going to come? Hell yeah. Thank you, bro. And same for you, bro. I, you, bro. the content that you're creating, stay vulnerable because really you do have a, a strong voice and a strong opinion. And like people, 
it, it has helped me. Yeah. So as it, it's helping one person. So I, I would love for you to keep doing it. Cause I want to, I want to keep being able to watch that kind of stuff. Yeah, and man. like your energy is just very, it's very uh, contagious. And I know that people will, uh, will enjoy hearing about it Thank and, you, uh, and keep hearing about your shit. So again, this is another week of people with a passion. Um, this is episode 30 of, oh. is it 30? Yeah, I think it's episode 30 or 31 or whatever. Cause I, I'm doing different segments now, so I'm getting kind of lost in this shit, but it's, it's, I still love it. Just so, keep on swimming, um, bro. You exactly. Keep on swimming. Keep doing your shit. If you want to try something, try it out. Cause yes, it's going to be fucking stupid at first and you're going to be terrible at it, but yeah. still do it. So. Hey, another week of people with a passion. Ethan, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Godspeed. Have a good one.